you want to live, don't you? No one can stop us from enjoying this meal, so enjoy it! Stop crying! I love the smell of my pop in the morning! I find your lack of faith disturbing. Your work is unparalleled, and I'm a huge fan of the way you lose control and turn into an enormous green rage monster. It's a trap! There's a monster outside my room. Can I have a glass of water? Get away from her, you bitch! It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. You made a great mistake. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Kind of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? I, I could be wrong, but I believe uh, diversity is an old, old wooden ship that was used during the Civil War era. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening. Man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. I am singing telegram. You're listening to Beer Bolters 30K. And welcome to episode one, one of, of one. Beer and Bolters 30K, what? the best horse heresy podcast in the world, because that's all we're doing nowadays. I'm Adam Adam Russman. I can't even remember my name anymore. Um, formerly of Beer and Bolters 40K, and of course, Nerd Rage Radio. And that is Chrissy, the Speed Freak. Blood Angel. Are you back into Blood Angels now, Chris? As of this morning, yeah, extremely so. They're pretty good. Yeah. And yeah. guys, th- we decided, listen, Chris keeps on moving away from me and, you know, finding these. Well, that was good material. It was, it was good. So this means I do need to watch the podcast because we're on an old ass fucking laptop. But guys. Oh, we could use mine. It's fine. It's our, we're dude. We spent the last hour setting this one up. We're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep Are it going. We still recording? Yeah, we're recording. Wow, that's dumb. So guys, <laughs> it's been a while since we've been here. I think the last episode was last year with Joe and I. And I was on one. Yeah, that was. It's been a while, bro. It's been a while. So that might have been a year ago because yeah. that was when we started, quote unquote, season two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one episode. I know. It was kind of like the Chappelle Show lost episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot has gone on, guys, and listen, anybody who's old Beer and Boulders fan, we do appreciate everything, all the support. I get a lot of comments and stuff on Nerd Rage Radio in regards to the podcast. It's just this has always been a podcast that's been more face-to-face. It started out face-to-face where I think Nerd Rage just kind of started on Skype, and so when we kind of pulled apart, um, it did, you know, locationary, in a locationary speaking and then my job changed two or three times. Joe is picked up more hours as Joe's on the podcast for a while. Uh, Viking Paul ac- was actually on the History Channel now. Yeah, he's That's actually pretty... kind of famous now. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch the show at I all? I didn't watch it yet. Oh, it's actually pretty good. I know. I heard. I heard it was good. I mean, it made me want to do it. Yeah, it looks pretty badass. And yeah. good for Paul, man. Congratulations, bro. Good luck on that stuff. Yeah, That's badass. And um, but the big thing is, is I do feel, and we, maybe we can talk about this first before we get into uh, hobby update is the game has changed a lot since we started the, the podcast. 8th edition um, has basically bankrupted me from standard 40K, even though I still have all the codexes, even though I still have a, a very large collection of 40K models. But I can say kind of the same thing. I literally bought a 40K army. Like, how many points do you think that Tyranid army is? Oh, my God. 40,000 like, points? 40,000 points, and like, something like that. And not, we're not exaggerating. It's, it's literally huge. boxes it, and boxes of fucking models. I had to go out and buy two more storage shelves just for that army. Yeah. And I played two games of 8th edition, neither of which were were with the army I went out and bought. Yeah. Do you still have that, that Ravenwing army? I do. I need to sell that. I'm selling my uh, 40K Blood Angels, fellas. Yeah. And your ladies. orcs. I already sold most of the orcs. Um, gonna sell some Raven Guard. Probably gonna sell the Tyranids too. I am not mad at you. Yeah, I uh, keeping my my fantasy stuff though. Cause oh really? Old world never dies. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I do like, and the and the thing is, I'm not selling any of my 40k proper stuff either. I still have my Space Wolves army. Now I did Maria Maria Kondo. It if it didn't spark joy, I got rid of it. Um, so stuff that was unpainted, even though sitting behind Chris is another five um, uh, Wolfen models, three uh, Space Thunder, Wolf ballerinas. yeah, th- <laughs> Thunder Wolf models, and a Let's Start uh, Space Wolves Army box set for 40k, which I had seven got rid of. But I sold a lot of my stuff online, and um, but my 30k collection has gotten ridiculous here, 
and I just I got I've gotten to that point. Um, first off, doing getting engrossed in the books, and that's why we decided to go with thirty k way. And we're going to get into a lot of news that came out with a new book with book eight. Chris is actually still researching it right now, making notes. So I'm just like, <laughs> I'm bullshitting my way through him getting it squared away, so we can talk about it. But, oh, I'm back on Tinder. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to be doing that. <laughs> At least you're honest. At least you're honest. Um, apparently, Scout is a good one, too. That's what my brother says. I've never even heard of that. Man. Yeah. It might just be know. one for dirty hookups. I don't know. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Scruff is one my dad uses. You don't want You don't want that one. You don't want that one. <laughs> anyway, um, so I think the the fixes in the red book for the, for the seventh edition rules, I guess the Army of Darkness uh, army list, the balance of the games... Um, the interest in the world right now. We're getting we're getting more information, more bits and pieces about the stories that happened during that era, and it's just very engrossing. I've gone through a shit ton of books, and one thing we'll get into here is some of the books we've read here, and we want to get into conversations. But the models have been good. Now, unfortunately, Forge World has kind of had some issues here recently, and they've been really lackluster with their production. Me being an avid Space Wolves fan, there's been some, you know, some disappointment with some of the models for the Legion. Even though once you get them paid enough, they're fine. Um, but they're in trouble. I don't know if we should start talking about that now, Chris, or if you're still engrossed in, in uh, sneak peeks of, of, you know, the Weekender right now. Um, I mean, about Forge World and their little... Uh... Per predicament, as it were. Yeah, let's let's get the what's the skinny on that? What do we know? <sighs> I mean, nothing a hundred percent, but I think between the two of us, we've got some pretty solid uh, leads, leads, insider info, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Um, word on the street is everyone's favorite man to hate, Tony. Well, I can't say his last name. It starts with a C, much like the word I like to use to refer to him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, apparently he's been given the uh, the word that he's got about nine months, maybe less at this point, because I think we first heard this, like, what, two weeks ago? Maybe even it's been, well, it's been a while. It's probably been a month ago, and I'm sure that it's yeah. it was delayed from when yeah, we got that information. It, but, and we've heard this now from, what, like two different sources? Something two, like that? Yeah, two different sources. Two different sources uh, in Opposite sides of the world. That's correct. Um, that uh, they have nine months from whenever they were told to get Forge World profitable or get out. Yep. Now, I don't know if that means just him getting the boot or if that means um, Forge World itself getting the boot. <laughs> But I know there is uh, a lot of unhappiness from GW Corporate regarding how Forge World is being handled and their kind of lack of just getting with the program. I mean, I think, Adam, you and I both are not particularly big fans of 8th, which no. is kind of an understatement. But I think we can both agree that we think the shift in the way GW as a company has been being run yeah. has been extremely positive, and their profits show that. Yeah, they've been, you know? and I still, in every time I talk to my wife about money, I was like, you know, we could have made that uh, ten thousand bucks. We ran into uh, into about, I don't know, seventy thousand bucks right now if we if we invested. I thought in, you did buy. I, you did she bought like literally one share, and well, I, it I went up a lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Probably but it's more not than like. In the last. No, I mean, it, dude, it quintupled in like a year. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Um, but, you know, yes, they've been doing very well. Eighth has done well for them. It has. I yeah. do, uh, AOS has done well. I I wonder how these other boxes are doing, like the Necromunda, the Kill Teams. People people love the Kill Teams. I'm not overly impressed by it. Um, but, I will say, though, every time I've been into a game store yeah. in the last year, that's what people are playing. I I actually think that kill teams is what is what eighth should have been. I think they should have left seventh the way it was, um, and and you know they can still do updates to codexes or or new codexes or supplementals. You know you know what the the model they had for seventh when they had like the main co- they had the main codex and there's like a secondary codex. They yeah, were doing yeah, like the, with the champions of Fenris. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the best way to have a supplemental codex to the main codex. Yeah. 
that way you can get new units, new models, and everything, and not tweaks. Exactly. Like that. Yeah, that'd be, yeah. That's. I think that's a, a good thing. I mean, unfortunately, they were killing us with with the price of some of these books, and now I think that they're doing a little bit better. But you know, it is what it is. But yeah, yeah eighth for me, and in the club, and and it, listen. Guys, if you love eighth, like I said before, with all the stuff, you win. If you're a new player coming in and you and you're digging it, then you win. If you're somebody who hasn't been uh, in the hobby for a while and this is bringing you back to the hobby, then you know we're glad to have you back and you win. I mean, we are focusing specifically on 30k because I thought it was unfair to do a 40k podcast and s- talk specifically about. Today. I mean, I don't know if I played a game of eighth edition in the whole year of 2018. I'm pretty sure I think that I. Played I I'm pretty sure that I did not. If I did, it was one game that I played Matt with my um, Grey Knights. And it was before the Grey Knights. It was before the Grey Knights got FAQ'd. <laughs> They're it's, still awful. The, no, it's when they were, before they got FAQ'd, so they were smiting everybody. Oh, so that was the time when they were broken, and now they're yeah, broken. Yeah, so, it, you know, the internet fix, you know, give me the time frame. I think it might have been, it might have been the end of 2017. It might have been they earlier. They got nerfed in the first, um, the first quarter chapter approved or whatever that was, and it was before that came out. Yeah, which is another thing that I like that they're doing. I mean, that but that's almost old school, right? Because yeah. they used to do. Oh, something absolutely. Like that that's very dwarf. third. That's very third edition thing. Yeah, and they used to do stuff in the the white dwarfs as well, of course. So I think they're, and you know, I don't, I don't know because I haven't checked, but they're not getting all those data sheets and format formations that they were selling like in the iTunes store and stuff like that. I think they got away from that as well. Because that was kind of cool, but I I've always liked having the physical you know book. I'll I'll invest in that. I like have I'm a, you know I'm a collector in regards to stuff like that. So I I'll go out and buy the book just to have it. Um, some of the digital stuff was just kind of a pain in the butt because especially if somebody wasn't familiar with it and you and you pulled out some crazy some crazy list and it's not really verifiable from like a main book unless you go and buy this one seven ninety nine upgrade, which is just kind of bullshit. So, but I, the, the club has really gone ham in regards to, uh, horse heresy. We've done a lot of 30 K games. Uh, we're getting ready to initiate a campaign for book number two, which is massacre, Something right? Like betrayal, never, betrayal, massacre, heard. exterminatus, or is it, is, it extermination. Is, it, is it an extermination? Yeah, I, th- I think I'm I really bad. at remember the names cause I know the names of basically three books. Betrayal, because it's the first one. Yeah. And Betrayal, you know, is an easy title, because that's what happens then. It's like, oh, shit. I know Inferno, because you've been friggin' spanking yourself to that for the last, what, two? Has it been two years now? Uh, Has it been three? It hasn't been three years. I think it's it's been... been two? I think Russ has been out. Wasn't it like two years ago? Yeah, it might have just hit two years, which is crazy. And then obviously I know Malevolence. Yep. Formerly called Angelus. Yeah. And we're going to jump into that real quick. Um, But before we go, um, a lot of stuff is going on with hobby updates. Uh, I've got a full-ass Emperor's Children Army. I still have about 40 (laughs) models left to paint, but they're, they're getting there. I mean, they've got paint on them. They're better than most of my stuff. I've painted uh, <laughs> almost 3,000 points or over, no, 3,200 points worth of um, Iron Hands yeah. in the month of January. Yeah. So my Iron Hands army is pretty much done. I can throw a couple other heavy support units in there, maybe a fast attack or, fast attack or two. And I've also been working a little bit on my custodies. And uh, I'm like I said before, I'm doing the whole marine condo thing. So if something doesn't spark joy, I'm letting it go, man. So I sold a lot of my additional uh, 40k armies. Like I sold a lot of my chaos guys. Um, and if I can't use them for 30k, or it's, it's an army I really don't that don't want, it's going. Also, I'm working on ultramarines. Uh, they're fucking beautiful, though, man. Ah, uh, they are. I mean, hell. Built like a squad and a half of them myself. Yeah, I can't man. really talk shit. They're great. They look good. So let's uh let's jump into the exciting stuff. What's going on? And I guess you can take it away. It seems that this is not necessarily your normal black book. It seems to be a big, almost FAQ update book. Um, yeah. but there's a lot in it thus far. So yeah, yeah. 
Um, Let's take it away. The only thing that we don't have is the book itself. Yeah. <laughs> because Forge World pulled a Forge World and... Uh... <laughs> Do we have any details of why it's been postponed? It was... Apparently it's on the ship or something. They screwed something up. Okay, they, okay. They That's cagey. good. But the, you know, hallmark product, whatever the heck, you know, you want to call it for this event. Yeah. Isn't there. Yeah. Yeah. Like at all. They have one copy of the book there, according to my two or three buddies that are at the event literally right now. I mean, at this point, um, they should just let people take it down to the photocopy machine and just start making photocopies. Dude, they're not even doing that. But it's literally, they have a <laughs> single copy from the main rules writer, uh, Anuj. I forgot his last name, but he's he's actually a chill guy. Yeah. Not that that really matters for any of this, but, you know, just want to throw that out there. He seems like a chill guy. Um, but, yeah, they have one copy of the book from the main rules writer that literally has, you know, his name and desk copy sharpied across the front of it. That's some funny shit And they're right letting there. people glance at it. But we got a lot of information. There's been a bunch of picture dumps for... Yeah. Um, there's some been rules released... A lot of new units identified, and uh, they're. It looks like they're finally cleaning up on some stuff they haven't put out models for yet, and they're getting that. They're getting that done, and some other new wildness. Don't I'm, get I, excited, Iron Warriors players. You still don't have Iron Havoc. Models. Yeah, you know what? I, and I don't think we're, I got a Iron Havocs right over there. They're just fucking devastators. Those aren't yours. Those are mine. No, they're the. They're, they're mine. Okay, they're mine. They're fine. Mine. Whatever. It's my army. No, I'm just being a bitch. You can have them. They're yours. It's fine. <laughs> I guess the thing people probably want the most is uh So you start with sanguineous? The big sanguineous. Sanguineous. <laughs> sanguineous. Yeah, something sang, sanguineous, I think. I it was calling sanguineous. sanguineous because you know, weenie. He's not a weenie, bro. No, he's not, not at all. Um keep in mind this is all basically cut and pasted together from various people that have gotten a chance to look at the single copy of the book that exists. And post, and then everyone's kind of corrected each other's. Um, like this is yeah. all from memory. Yeah, this so they're looking is at the book like and then going people, back and writing yeah. down what they can remember from it. And then everyone kind of like works together to piece together whole rules from what they can remember. Yeah. But the I think most complete, consistently said thing that I've seen is he is four hundred and eighty-five points, mm -hmm. weapon skill nine, okay. which is only equaled by what Russ and. Angron, if I remember I right. I believe so. Yeah. Um, BS5, meh, who cares? Um, strength 6, pretty normal. Toughness 6, pretty normal. Initiative 7. That's good. Uh, 6 wounds. That's average. 6 attacks. That's also average. Is that? I thought that was like one more than normal. I thought Primax was like know what? 5. You know what we could do? If only we, we had. We could get one of those millions of rule books. Yeah, if only we had an app that I can literally put every Primarch on the app at the same time and compare notes. Oh, what app is that? Quartermaster brought to you by ISO formats. It's fucking awesome. Something like that. Oh, that's actually, that's a hobby update. Yeah. Oh, me, me, Go ahead and tell him, Chris. finally getting the iPhone. Go ahead and tell him. Tell what you did. Yeah, so I got you an did. iPhone because, you dirty girl. as I think, you know, long-time listeners know, I work in the IT field. Which means, by default, I pretty much loathe any Apple product because talking that shit, bro. I have to talk that shit, man. I hate, I hate talking it. Talking that shit. Anyway, Adam has been, you know, hoofing or whatever the term is about um, the fact that my ex girlfriend bought me an iPhone. Oh, um, now it's the ex girlfriend's fault. Well, she did do it. Bullshit. <laughs> she did. You want to look at the receipts? <laughs> Her ass for it. You have but, to take um, this I got it actually for work because I got tired of getting asked questions about how to do stuff and me being like, I don't friggin' know. Yeah. I've never used one. All I do is talk shit. But I have, uh, what is it, the iPhone X, whatever now. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's fine. to me, yeah, it's fine. It's like the same thing as any other phone. I don't, honestly, there's not really a big difference. Mm hmm. At first, I hated it because I didn't know how to do anything on it because all the gesture shit and the lack of buttons. Now it's normal, but nah, I mean, whatever. No, I don't think they're the it. end all be all like you seem to think, but I don't. I mean, think I don't, I don't think they're the end all be all. I just think they're they're effective and efficient in regards to what I need because I'm yeah. fucking, you know, I'm 
old technology. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not with it like everybody else. Nowadays. I gotta say though, the funny thing, I'm doing a horrible tangent now, but the funny thing is everyone's like, yo, you gotta get it, you can FaceTime people, it's super great. Oh, the FaceTime shit. I've done it like twice since I got the phone. Oh really? I don't I don't FaceTime that often either. No, I know it's I, I didn't, I didn't sell that. Like, oh, I didn't sell so that to great. you, did I? It, it, no, you didn't. You okay. did not do okay. that. It was a bunch of my buddies, because like almost all of my buddies that like aren't in the tech industry, which is probably like half the people I know, are like, "Oh, dude, like FaceTime's great," and I get it. And everyone's like, "No, nah, nobody does that shit." Yeah, <laughs> all right, so Angron does have weapon skill nine. Okay, how many uh, attacks does he have? He has five, six with his additional close combat weapon. Dude, so Sanguinius has more attacks than Angron. Yeah, but does he get? He, does he get? He might have a rule in there as well where it's five and then six in parentheses. Either way, yeah. Sanguinius gets more because he also gets an additional bonus attack on the charge. Oh, the Hammer Wrath. Oh, no, no, no. He gets an oh, additional bonus. Okay. Attack. Well, yeah, give us the details. Yeah, I got Let me shut my fucking so, mouth. Six attacks, which is higher than average then because mm-hmm. he's also got two weapons. Well, he's got four weapons. Spoiler alert. Um, leadership 10, blah, blah, blah. Two up save. Four up in Vaughn, which he gets to re roll failed in Vaughn saves on the turn he charges. Okay, that's cool. And I've also heard the turn he deep strikes, although I've heard that less. Okay. So, yeah, plus one initiative, plus one attack, in addition to the normal plus one for charging, which would make he, him in his rage. Eight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hold your horses. All He's right, got a lot all of right. Rules. I my bad. So, on the charge, he is initiative eight. Which is fast as shit. And theoretically, you know, weapon skills or um, six attacks Mm -hmm. plus two for charging puts him at eight. Mm -hmm. Depending on what's going on with the, you know, two weapons, that's either eight or nine friggin' attacks. I bet you, but he, I bet you he doesn't have an additional close combat weapon. Oh, he does. He does. Oh, he has that moon silver. He's got. Two swords and a pistol. He does have a pistol. He, yeah. Okay. Oh, he's got a pistol. Okay. So theoretically, he's getting nine attacks on the charge. Oh, wait, and what's that? One of his weapon options also gives him Rampage. Really? Rampage. Plus, plus D3? Which plus one is that? Plus D3. Is that the moon sword or whatever? That is... Do, 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 um, damn it. Now i got to keep scrolling. Um, That's the Encarmine Blade. Okay, but you have to pick the spear. You have to or... pick the spear Telesto or the Encarmine Blade. Now, do you have to pick that and model it that way? Like you have to have, I... have this or that, like the points. I think you kind of do because. Well, we, we, uh, let me correct that. We know you have to. You we know you have different options to model it. So one is you can have the blade or the sword or the the spear. And if you do the fancy base, sold separately. Yeah. <laughs> but it is actually now that we've seen it, it's pretty dope. It I is. would it's pay nice. for it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to pay for it probably three times because I'm going to buy the yes. normal real model, the normal fancy model, and then I'll probably buy a couple fakes because why not? <laughs> you know, cause, Just to have a couple. Yeah. I, in, I, I'll i end up with them. I won't buy them. I don't know where they came from. Yes. They're just at my house. They, um, yeah, because you're going to buy like three of them for at least for the club so when you go to LVO. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, I'm going to LVO in four days, I think I leave. Five days. I might need you to pick me up uh Alpharius as well. I'll let you know. Because he's still the only one he's the only he's still the only one I don't have thus far. You don't have an Alpharius? Mm mm. No. Huh, that's weird. I thought all your Primarchs are secretly Alpharius. <laughs> uh, lame joke. Um yeah, I'm going to buy a bunch. Anyway, got to jump back to it. We're, dude, we're so bad at tangents. It's fine, dude. It's funny because I'm going on a tangent on how bad we are at doing tangents. So, so nine, so I, I would guess that it's six attacks and he'll have a little thing in there. The, I know, I think, I think it'll be, he's got five attacks and it's the parentheses six, including his additional weapons. But I'm not, I'm okay with him having an additional one. Either way though. Yeah. He's got the potential to have 10 attacks on the charge. Yes. Pretty consistently. And now his hammer wrath attacks are AP two. Is that correct? And strength 10. Oh wow, that's ridiculous! Yeah, he can blow up a tank by running into it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um. Oh. So yeah, let me jump back to that. Um. So Sire of the Blood Angels gives him plus one initiative and an additional plus one attack 
on the tourney charges. All Blood Angel units in the army that have jump packs may use them in both phases. Take that, 7th edition Raven Guard. That's fucking tight. Fuckers. I'm not bitter about that at all. Um, and then also something about Blood Angel units within three inches of him get plus D3 uh, wounds for the purposes of settling assault, which combined with a couple other things could give you pretty reliable chance of winning combat, even if you get your ass handed to you in combat pretty well. Yeah, plus D3 is... But they, they gotta be how close to him? Three inches is what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, that's... that's... In a squad, basically. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be difficult to rely on. That's gonna be. <sighs> it basically means the unit with him. Yeah, yeah. Or a unit that's also in the same combat. Yes. But the thing is, blood angels are gonna pretty reliably win combat. Adding the wounds to that means they will run you down basically every time. Yes. Especially if he's a jacked up initiative like that. If you're in a combat with Sanguinius, your squad dies. Is basically what that means. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because if you add plus D3, that averages two. Assuming Blood Angels are probably going to win by, let's say, another two. Well, there. Right there, you're down four. Well, hold on a second, though. Do Rage and um, the other thing stack? Rampage? Rampage stack. Yes. They do? Yes. Okay. Because I thought Rampages was, instead of getting an additional attack, you get additional D3. You do. For the charge. Well, it's not. No. Okay. It's not for the charge. If you're outnumbered, you get an additional D3. Which means if you oh, were to no, say I thought, have. I thought Rage. I thought Rampage was just additional D3. It is. When if you you're charge. No, I, I didn't think you if had. If you're outnumbered. Has that changed in, in Horse Heresy? No. That's really? what it's been. Huh. We might have to you pause. Just got rules we to might have to pause that and check the seventh edition book. Let it be known that I've won about seventy-five percent of these arguments. That's not true. You've owned my ass on the couple you've got me on, but well, my, I, my superpower is being an idiot savant. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll agree part. with that. But like some of them, some of them, I know. We'll we'll check right now. All right, I stand corrected. You're right about that. <clears throat> Yeah, I I was thinking the only the only time I use ever used Rampage was for Murder Fang. Yeah, and he was always because he's a single model, always outnumbered. He's always outnumbered, and he basically is never in combat more than one round. Because yes, he fucking yeah, lives up to a, his name. Oh, but McMurray. I guess yeah, tangenting again. So we got a nice little trade off because your Death Sworn are basically forty k Blood Angel Death Company, and we just got essentially Murder Fang. Who also flies. <laughs> That's right. One of the Blood Angels' unique units in Book 8 is a fucking flying Contemptor Dreadnought that has giant claws and can deep strike or move like a jump pack unit, apparently. They just released pictures of it on the actual official website. Now, I- I'm assuming if it's not a character... It's a class. It is the Blood Angel Contemptor Incandius class. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But I would doubt that you could have a whole fucking shit ton of those. I but maybe I you can. Take maybe you can. Nine of them in a list. That'd be that would be crazy. Oh, I wonder if they can put assault cannons on them too. If they can have flamers in their fists, they probably can. I know. I'm actually interested. I gotta now go back and look at that picture and see. Oh no! They show the pictures are set up so you can't actually see. Oh. That was in their fist. You can't. Yeah, because they're hands are down. Judging by, and Adam, if you could glance at this and see if you agree, but what does that look like on the back of the wrists? Um, to those me? are those are bolters. Those are bolter. Um. Or perhaps bolt assault rounds. cannons. No, they're they're bow. definitely bolt rounds. But you know what? There's only one on one. The other one is clean. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. I don't so, know. I would very much like to have assault cannons in those hands. Yeah, those are definitely the. They look like a heavy bolter. Um, oh. Magazine. I would accept heavy bolters. That'd be interesting. 
Because right now, only the Red Scorpion's guy has the Heavy Bolter. Yeah. The Cullen guy or whatever. Yeah. With the a cool one. rule that you can shoot it when you put it into something. Oh, really? Like, yeah, you can hit something and then just... That's pretty the badass. Bolter. I just realized I mocked doing that, and of course... We're on know, a podcast. We're on a it's podcast, fine. It's not fine, a video. Chris. Oh. So, anyway, back to Sanguinius, because, you know... All right, so ADD. nine nine times out of ten, he's going to be in multiple combat, even if he's <laughs> even if he's oh you should have just you know fighting another out. character because most characters have red twins. so maybe he maybe he needs to roll by himself. Maybe he shouldn't have a command squad. Mm. I mean, I know everybody likes to juice up you know the the guy, but he one one on one they're only going to slow him down in real life. You know what I mean? You know what you could do? Put them with like three predators with the double wound swords. Oh, that'd be tight. That'd be tight. <laughs> and just be like, oh yeah, my single squad of four guys. Yeah, but you know just what? Just did it, like 50 wounds. You know what his problem is going to be though? He's only got a five of invulnerable save from shooting attacks. Right? Oh, uh, four up. Are you sure? Four up. Okay. Okay. It was the con you're thinking of, but we haven't gotten. There oh, yet. oh my bad. So <gasps> a four, uh, you know, a four up's not bad. Yeah, because my 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 thinking with that was is that, you know, he's going to come in and kill the entire squad that he's fighting. And then be not, standing there with and, his uh, yeah, with his dick in his hand, well, getting ready to get shut up. Yeah. Do Primarchs have dicks? Do we know that? They they do for sure, man. Why would they? Uh, dude, we've already talked about no, this. No, we talked about Marines. Why would Primarchs have dicks? They're still. They're literally they're, individually crafted. To not, they're still humans. Oh, really? I, I mean, feel like they're almost more creatures of chaos than they are humans. I hear you. I mean, I, I mean, they're I think, freaking I think straight up it, made from the warp. I think if they didn't have dicks, though, we would that would have been a big issue. That would have Fulgrim's been a big issue. Got a dick. He wasn't born with it, but dude, there there was some uh, talk about Fulgrim's guy doing some very Fulgrim's people back even before the heresy be doing some very crazy sexual shit as well. Hey, don't kink shame, bro. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, I know. Oh. So, six attacks, possibly seven. Two on the two on the uh, on charge, the charge, which is, I guess, basically rage. So maybe he has rage, and they just didn't say it. Yeah. Plus so that's D3. nine. So that's eight, eight or nine plus D three. So let's say a minimum of nine. Yes. Maximum of eleven. Oh eight ten. Yes. Can't go over it. Not eighth. Plus, he has a two hammer wrath hits. Two. Yeah. Doesn't he have double hammer wrath hits? No, he just has strength 10 AP2. Oh, just a single one. Yeah, but okay. still. I thought I read Crash into the back of a tank and boom. No, that's that's great. I mean, that's yeah. so that's pretty stupid. Yeah. What and I actually, actually think you know, actually, might... does a hammer wrath is it a separate thing? Does it count towards his total attacks? Uh, no. Yeah, it just says everything I've seen is hammer of wrath at strength 10 AP2. God, it'd be it. nice if that conveyed to his unit. <laughs> That would be ridiculous. I mean, we've seen dumber rules. That made. would be ridiculous, dude. Yeah. Now, now he's got. We got to get new horse rules. Well, got, there, the, I mean, the whole concept of Cygnus is that Horace was scared of him. Yeah, absolutely. Straight terrified of him, and knew he wouldn't go bad. So, or at least didn't think he'd go bad. So basically, sent him to the other side of the universe. To get murked, and it didn't work. But we do we do know that Horus ultimately, you know, kills. Well, we don't know that because that's well, still it's my assumed. So the, like, and we haven't had done this on the podcast for a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my theory out now. I am wondering if the Horus Heresy novels are gonna pull a quick one on us, and we're gonna find out that what the Black Rage really is, because a Red Thirst is something different. The Black yeah. Rage is is. Sanguinius' death echoes or whatever screeched through and fucking up everybody. I think what we're going to really find out, and this was kind of alluded to in the Ruin Storm, is that Sanguinius basically lived every version of everything that could happen with Horus and found out a way to kill him. But when he did so, he basically becomes even worse than Horus, takes over, basically becomes a god. At one point, they they, sit, they start saying how he becomes so powerful, he can just raise cities with his hand, just like fucking Dr. Manhattan out of yeah. sand, ra- raising glass structures, and ends up, you know, ev- becoming even worse 
you know, destroying what humanity could be. So he refuses that, and he also refuses to accept his fate, yada, yada, yada. But now I do wonder if he does kill Horus, kind of goes, you know, kind of does a Luke a Skywalker, goes to the dark side for a hot second, and it's the Emperor who kills him. I mean, it could even and, be, you know, it, he kills Horus, and then the Emperor's like, hmm. You gotta go. Hmm, we can't have this. But I, I, I think it'd be interesting if the if the Emperor has to kill him because he's like, I can't control it. You have to you have to kill me now. And the Emperor kills him and then just covers everything up. Like that's like the biggest thing, like so he's not dishonored or anything. I'm gonna disagree only because the Ruin Storm for me did nothing but solidify that whole sacrificial I, nature I, of his No, thing. I'm with you. I think that's but definitely there. Fun. I think that's fun. definitely there. But the the other thing is I just it, it just we know what's going to happen, so they have Horus to do. Ha, they have to do end. something. They have to do something. You know what I mean to make it more interesting. I mean, even with like, the Wolfsbane thing, it was a total shocker to me that when Russ fought Horus, who's in fucking God mode, he still could fucking killed him, but he they didn't. You know? Yeah, that was odd. It's fucking tight. Is what it was. Well, of course you like it. <laughs> I just thought it was weird because for me, I was like, all this stuff is hyped up, and then it's like, wait, Russ already got him. What? <laughs> no, the fight was pretty long, though. Did you read the book? No, I haven't read that one yet. I'm, uh, I've been bouncing around. I'm reading Titan Death right now. Bas- basically, robots. basically, Russ knows. Russ sacrifices a fucking talon strike to, through the chest to get an opening up, and he just fucking launches that spear in there. And like Horse is like, oh, he's like, I got you. Like he, he's in there, and like Horse looks down at him. He's like, and Russ is like, yep, <laughs> and shoves it in there even more. Uh-huh. And like fucking Horace looks up and screams and light like shoots out of his eyes and his mouth. And then he becomes Horace Lupercal for like a yeah, hot second. Normal Horace. Yeah. They have a couple work and everybody I think and I and, and I might be you know, this is like my my brain cannon now, but like everybody like just stops and just witnesses this. As he's like Bah Yeah. Oh, and then, like but, then, but then he's like place. then it's like one of those he you know, he's mine and you should have killed him when you had the chance and then like whatever the demon horse bit comes back. Um, there's some stuff with Malagurus that's in there as well, which is fucking badass. Yeah. We can talk about that, but that's some major spoilers. Yeah, we're going to leave that alone. Yeah, so keep going, man. What else What else we got rule-wise? Ugh, God, I haven't even finished Sanguinius rules. We've been talking about it for like a half hour. Yeah, just keep getting distracted. Um, he and his unis, unit do, uh, do not he scatter. He and his eunuch. He's his got a eunuch that comes uh, around yeah, with him. Yeah, boom, we there, I'm about right. No penises. Yeah. Him and his eunuch Horus. <laughs> Um, yeah. he can vector strike at strength six AP two. So he can fly with some other nonsense. So, so does he have the fly rule then? No, but I'm hmm. assuming it's basically the same thing though. If he moves across something, he can just be like, boop. Oh, okay. He okay. can boop the snoot. Um, he has an 18 inch infernus pistol with something, something, something. And somebody said it's one shot only still. Nine inch melter range pistol. Yeah. Pretty nasty, especially if you then and, can strength the wrath into the back of the tank that you already almost blew up. And not for nothing, let's be honest, right? If if he can move twelve in assault twelve that everybody has that rule. I'm not assuming. assault twelve, re roll. Oh, okay. Yeah, but still, that's a reliable all right, you move twelve, yeah. Average yeah, 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 charge yeah, yeah. is yeah. seven with the re roll bumps it up. So like eight or nine, right? Yeah. Although it depends on how many dice you re-roll, and it's both. So it's really. And, and I'm sure he can. I, want, I wonder if he can deep strike and assault the same turn. Probably not. Probably not. They're not going to do that. I wish they'd do that. He should be able to. He He's should fucking be able to bro. land on somebody's friggin' head. Yeah. Just deep strike onto somebody and be like, "Yeah, that guy's dead." Yep. He just speared to the brain. Hey, um, one of my special rules is I can just come on the board and just literally kill one of your guys so oh, he's like dead termite. and I just replace him yeah <laughs> I love the termite drill yeah oh I scattered onto your squad oh no I don't mishap your squad dies <laughs> yeah it's fucking awesome dude uh, I use I used my three termites in a in a game the other day they're fucking disgusting I still haven't used mine they're it's fucking disgusting literally sitting behind you I haven't painted oh, it yet oh not quite with the arms reach Ugh, it's like an inch out of arms reach but it's there we'll throw some paint on that later um, but yeah he's gonna be good Oh, weapon options then. Got to get to that. So option A, because you have to pick, is the Encarmine Blade, which is the strength. Blade, 
the plus blade and carmine. Two. No, the blade and carmine is a different weapon. Is it? The carmine blade is Sanguinius's. The blade no, and no. carmine. He refers it to it as the blade and carmine well, then several they're times. Flipped then, because Ralderon has one that's also got the carmine something. But anyway, according to this, the Incarmine Blade, I can never fucking remember. Um, strength plus two, which is strength eight. Mm -hmm. Doubling motherfuckers out. Yep. Um, AP two, Shred. And oh wait, Rampage. So nice. that's where he gets Rampage. Okay. Um, option B. Is there a point difference here too? It is not listed. I... I would assume there's probably a point difference looking at these, but um, and, uh, and we don't know if you can if you can take both of them and just have to choose which one you want to use in combat. No, you right? have to you have to pick. Okay, yeah, so you, you have can't have both on the table. So I have to buy two copies of this model then, because I'm gonna model them each. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you can always magnetize that. Nah, I'm not bothering, man. I feel you. I'm yeah, not. Like, hey, I, I don't magnetize stuff really. I'm not mad at you. Um. So the Spear of Telesto, in melee, it is strength plus three, which brings it up to strength nine, which is the point of fucking people up. But that's only when he charges, correct? No. Oh, I saw... I, we might want to double check on that, because I read, I read that. It's, it it's strength. charge. It's strength user AP2 when he doesn't charge. Uh, no, what I'm seeing... Oh, you know what? You're right, I've misread this. So it's strength plus three on the charge... Strength 9, user normally, so strength 6, AP 1 on the charge, AP 2 normally, yep. all right, good with that, armor bane, and then wound rolls of 6 do an extra wound. Oh, wow. Pretty sexy. Shooting, it's like a 12 a straight up extra, inch, so double, double wounds on 6s. Which is pretty sexy. That's fucking nasty. Um... Especially with that many attacks, yeah. And on the charge at strength nine, he like he can beat most primarchs from. Oh yeah. Bit. Like I mean, granted he's four hundred and eighty five points. At initiative, at initiative eight. Yeah. On the charge, yeah. yeah that's so before nasty. they even strike, he can bring a lot of these guys down to like barely functioning status. Um, shooting, twelve inch range, strength seven, AP two, armor bane, double wounds on sixes. Wow. For the pistol? No, that's the spear. Oh, that's right. That's I the forgot spear, that. It's got the laser. Yeah, He's that's got the right. Laser. Um, laser. Although it, I understand that it's described as him throwing it, whereas all the past stuff is it's a fucking laser. Well, yeah, definitely in the book, it definitely shoots fucking laser beams out of it. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and then the other part of that weapon package is the moon silver blade which i don't believe has ever been referred to before not that i'm aware of so it's strength user which is six ap3 Ooh, not bad it's got duelist edge all right so then he gets the plus that means plus he's one initiative. initiative in a challenge oh my god so in a challenge he's initiative then, nine on the charge he's initiative yeah nine yep fuck that's so that's high. ridiculous that is so But you high. know what, though? How, that's not going to be used... Well... All right, let's think this through. Most Primarchs are initiative seven, right? Let me see. Six. Didn't we figure out the oh, most... Well, Russ is seven. And Russ uh, Ang is fast. Angron's seven. Cruz is seven. Everybody else is six. What's Fulgrim? Uh, Korax is seven. Fulgrim... Oh, Fulgrim is eight. Fulgrim is eight. So... Okay, yeah. so Fulgrim is faster, except on the charge, which yes. makes sense. Like, yes. Fulgrim is a quicker dude, but Sanguinius yep. can fucking fly. Yep. And I like but, the fact but that if it's he, reflected. But if, uh, if Sanguinius didn't get the charge, but they were in a challenge, then they'd be the same initiative. Because initiative eight, the dual yeah. edge. Yeah, although using an AP3 sword against somebody with the two up is kind of dumb, but... No, he's only got a... Yeah, he's got a two up five it's up. It's Angron that's got the three up because yeah. he's, he's got a two. He's got a two up five up, but he uh, Fulgrim is a three up invulnerable in combat in hand to hand combat. Oh, that's true. So who cares? He's getting yeah. a three up no matter what. Yep. Yeah. So you use the sword. Um, so the Moon Silver rule gives extra wounds, so double wounds on demons. Oh wow! And against psychers 
and it looks like against monstrous creatures as well. So it now is this an effect weapon? It just gives him this effect in all of his combat, or the do you, weapon have to does. Choose, you have to use, choose this the weapon? The use of the weapon does that. Okay. Um, pretty oh, solid. That, that'd be that's kind of tough. So you really need to think of what you're going to use when you're when you're. Well, from the looks of it, combination B with the spear and the moon silver blade is the more specialized thing because you're going to fuck up tanks mm -hmm. and you're going to fuck up big monsters. And I, and I can stuff. assume that the moon silver beard, beard the moon beard. silver, moon silver sword, you always get. You have to sp pick the other sword or no. the spear. No, it only comes with the spear. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So the spear makes you good against like vehicles and big stuff, and then the moon silver blade is good against demons, monsters, like other stuff. Whereas the Encarmine blade fucks up marines. Yes. Tons of attacks, shred, AP two, extra strength, versus kind of being more specialized against big stuff or demons. So that's, I mean, that's pretty solid. Yeah, man, it's decent. I have seen nothing really for the con, although give me... He, so, I I, th I think it's safe to say that Sanguinius lived up to expectations. Oh, yeah. Um, and I gotta say, I know there's a lot of bitching about the uh, sculpt. Having seen it now with the 3D base and stuff... It's yeah, fine, seen it in 3D base, seen it in context of the, um, the demon... Like he's holding the demon, the demon's holding yeah, he's his got leg. The demon, like by the horn. Yeah, and the demon's holding his leg. It makes fucking sense. I like it. And he's basically just dropping the spear right into the demon's forehead. Yeah. And the other thing about cool. it is, is that yes, there's definitely some throwback to some classical Renaissance art of Archangel Michael, and I kind of dig that as well. Same. So it definitely has a classic feel, and it's and it's a challenging guy to win. All right, so what is that? It's a white scars marine. All red. A lot of red. I kind of yeah. like that though. Yeah. It's like half red, half white, a bunch of stuff. Hmm. You guys can't see it, but it's yeah. Go to thirty k. Uh, so basically, the Facebook only page. white on on him is white triangles on his legs, basically. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now I wonder if he's a special a, a special unit. Maybe no, because they don't get any white scars. Get uh, terminators, jet bikes, and the speeder. Hmm. Jumping back to other special stuff, we've got Chapter Master Ralderon, the first captain, Chapter Master, Blood Angel, what is it? Oh, the Equerry to the Primarch, and the, I can't even actually read, Archon of Wisdom, I think is what that says. Oh, yeah, the Archon of Wisdom, of course. It's kind of cool. 180 points, which is criminally low. Um, weapon Skill 7, BS 5, Strength 4, Toughness 4. Three wounds, initiative five, four attacks, leadership ten, two up, four up because of an iron halo. So he's, he's basically a, he's not a praetor. He's. I, I mean, know, I guess he is. He is, he is yeah. a praetor. Yeah, because yeah. they only have three wounds. That's right. I don't know why. Which I always think. surprises me. I always assume they have four, but centurions have two and praetors have three, which I guess makes sense. Like I, I kind of like that the wounds are lower in seventh than in eighth. Um, I think the. Ether armor for Space Wolves gives you an extra wound. It does. I think that shit's broken, but it's not Saga, expensive. Saga the Bear, bro. I mean, I think it's 25 or 35 points. Yeah, that's not a lot, though, for, for a effective... wound. Yeah, man, that's a lot. <sighs> I don't know, though. I mean, you're effectively, I mean, dude, in some cases... Yeah, but you, you, you spend 15 bucks on another Marine and throw it in that squad or whatever, you know what I mean? And, like, look out, sir. Yeah, fair enough. I never look out, sir, stuff. I'm an idiot with that. Yeah. Um, All right. It's got Arty Armor, the Encarmine Warblade. There we go. That was what I was trying to figure out. A Combi Flamer. It's pretty fluffy. Bolt Pistol, Iron Halo, Fragment Crack Grenades. May only be taken as a Loyalist. No shit. Um, Is there any <laughs> unloyal... Um, I think Space Wolves... Uh, oh, oh, you're saying unloyal Blood Angels? No. Yeah. Not yet. The funny thing is, aren't Space Wolves able to be both? No. Really? Yeah. I don't think so. Well... I don't know if the game mechanic allows it, but there's no, there was no Trader Space Wolves. There was Trader, no. there was Trader White Scars. Oh yeah, there's definitely About Trader half Dark. Half of the White Scars. Yeah, there's Trader. definitely Trader Dark Angels. No, they're all totally loyal. Yeah, yeah. I just all read that book them. about um, the the last 
the last you know multi story horse heresy book that came in and Luther literally um shields Typhon like puts it on a planet re, re you know helps him fix his fleet and everything and Typhon ends up becoming Typhus yeah fucking kill well, him well and then in the ruin him. storm like the lion basically goes and chooses to basically give up glory and all that to help get the blood angels to Terra to save you know humanity so yeah i'll joke about dark angels being traitors and most of them are but not all <laughs> yeah he's definitely the line is definitely a complex dude yeah he's weird i don't but know i, I kind of like him though i, I hope he gets a dope model oh, i'm sure he will i want to see those like the big teutonic I mean, he's gonna be the, the last he's gonna be the last one i hope they do not have the fucking big ass wings on his fucking helmet unless he has one of those little dudes following him around that'd be okay actually what i want is him to have like the long hair and the scraggly like Five o'clock shadow. Yep. Yep. And then have the helmet like clutched with the big wings, like under the arm. Oh, I want a little dude, a little a little man, a little man taking a little man, a little Jawa. Yeah, little Jawa, <laughs> little little boy named Ronnie, Just walking around with that helmet. That's what I want. Ronnie, give me my helmet. <laughs> get his, Bobby's got this thing. He does a little. Oh, my, my boy, my boy named Ronnie. He gonna be a ninja. I feel like I've heard him do that. Oh yeah. I haven't seen Bobby in a while. Yeah, man. I he, I I'd hit him up today, but he's like working. He's working a lot this week, so he can't yeah. fucking hang out That's and chill. Right. I, mean, I texted him off. earlier. Just picture my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the sad thing is he would just laugh at that. Oh, I'm sure. Like, so what else we got, bro? Uh, what's got Master Legion Furious Charge and the Arc Helm of Wisdom? Oh yeah. Oh, that's. Wisdom. Oh, so that's the title, Arc Helm of Wisdom. Arkhine? It's blurry. I swear to God I can read. It's just super blurry. Um, so the Incarmine Warblade, strength plus one. So strength five, six on the charge. Because of Furious Charge. Because Furious Charge, which is pretty sexy. Yeah, if... yeah, dude. Oh, and duh, he's got the Blood Angel trait, so he's wounding one better. So he's wounding on two. Hell yeah. No matter what. Oh, yeah, so how does the Blood Angel trait work now? One lower to wound. Wow, just a plus one to all your... To wound rolls. Yeah, which is awesome because that's actually better than plus one strength. But he also has Furious Charge, so he's getting plus two to his strength, then minus one to whatever he needs. So he's mo- he's wounding he's some monstrous creatures on two. On twos. That's like, pretty nuts. reliably. Yeah. Because, yeah, what do you wound? So he's... Uh, jet bikes are on twos. Yep. Um... Cat, no, cast lights no. are seven, so he's wounding them on three still no no um uh Voltrek, yes because he'd be strength six no he'd be strength on threes but still wounding them on threes yeah with no 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 is that right six attacks on the charge oh and he has shred okay, that's, that's <laughs> so two cool. re-rollables for almost everything um master crafted shred murder strike so on a six you're dead is that what murder strike does yeah on a six Instant kill? Go away. Instant death. Hmm. Get fucked. All right. We'll it also it. means no feel, no pain saves. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, which is super nice. So if he's making six attacks with this thing, re-rolling wounds, wounding on twos, re-rolling, and Mastercraft is so he gets to re-roll one of the misses, and he's weapon skill seven, which is super high. Yep. I mean, this guy would not beat Russ, but this guy could wound Russ pretty yeah, reliably, not, you know what I mean? Yeah, but if Russ hit him one time with the axe, he's dead. Exactly. But him and Sanguinius together, boom, Russ is gone, though. Yeah, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I wouldn't run uh, Russ by himself. Russ would be with a fucking pack of Vagari, which you can all take challenges. That's fine. Yeah, it is fine. What up? <laughs> and and uh, they're all taking oh. challenges. You know what's real useful? What's a that? flying dreadnought with add initiative AP two that does double wounds. That is pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's. I. I. Something tells me that's gonna either be real expensive or cause a lot of tears. I bet you can only have one. I. No, because it's a pattern. I hear. I, that's the crazy part. Yeah, just because I pattern, initially thought mean, it was one only, but then they released it and said it's a pattern. But just like the Scorpius, Scorpius, you can only have one per army. Can you? Yeah. I thought it was just one per slot. Nope. You sure about that? Yep. All right. I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure. I think you can have zero to one 
I think I'm right. No, because artillery squadrons are zero to one. I think you could take two Scorpiuses. I don't think so. I'm just not hella confident, so I'm not a. Well, I'm not gonna fight you on this. Go look up, uh, cause dude, I would if I could if that wasn't the case, I would have three of them. Why? Because I want to have three of them. I want I want to be able to fill with any option if I ever want to. I take a Sakaran Arcus instead and just be like, oops, I just fired eight strength eight missiles at you. Yeah, I'm gonna get one of those one of these days. Uh... Speaking of Sakarans. <laughs> oh yeah, so Sakarans can squadron now. But only two. Only up to two. Oh, final thing for Rolderon, though, and this is honestly a thing I think that makes him the best. He gets to pick his motherfucking warlord trait. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That's right. He gets to pick his motherfucking warlord trait. Yeah, that's fucking dope. That's gonna be yeah. that's gonna be uh, that's... very interesting, especially. Well, of course, that's if you're not running Sanguinius. Um, actually, Sanguinius might not have that rule that he has to be your warlord. Yeah, he probably does. Not, but I don't hey, think, no I don't think everybody. Idiot. I don't think everybody has that rule. Uh, no, it's a Primarch rule. Like uh, four Primarchs, okay. they got to be a thing. Okay. But the thing is, all right. So don't take Sanguinius. Pick the Master of Ambush trait. Oh, what's that? Oh, I get to just throw down three units wherever I want. Oh, how about my jump pack dreadnoughts? That's that. Yeah, that'd be you dope. Could put assuming they're like normal dreadnought talents. You could run him, and just slap down nine. Crazy at initiative AP two double wound jump pack dreadnoughts. That's a that's a hell of a lot of points though. I bet. What's a contemptor like two forty? I don't recall, but I mean you got to okay, think we'll, too. We'll call these be... three hundred just just to be totally on the safe side. Play a three thousand point game. Take Ralderon, a bodyguard squad. Uh, you know maybe three hundred points attack marines and as many dreadnoughts as you can fit in that list, and then. Infiltrate the dreadnoughts. So we've only been doing this podcast for an hour, and you've already neckbearded it to level twelve. Well, I'm never gonna do it. I don't. I mean, you know, I think you can vouch that no, I can come up with it, but I never do it. That's true. Ever. That's true. And it's one of those things too, where you never know. Like you know, there might be some shit where they can't have. Well, they don't have. They can't have armored ceramite contemptors, right? Is it them that can't? I can never remember. I think they can't. I think that Leviathans can. Yeah. I often don't take armored ceramide on stuff because everyone assumes you take it so nobody takes melt-a-guns. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't take it on anything. Just saved myself 200 points that I yeah. used to buy another good tempter. That's true. I mean, you know, and there's some there's some good, you know, logic behind not taking all the juicy shit. Yeah. I know? The only thing I put it on is the Leviathan that deep strikes in the backfield that I don't think I've ever actually used because my Dreadnought Drop Pod is actually sitting directly in front of me right now, partially in pieces. And because they're releasing soon, maybe even this weekend, yeah, I think they're up for pre-release. The new, upscaled, less shitty Dreadnought Drop Pod, mine's getting turned into terrain. I'm not mad at you. It's okay. You know, I never use... I never use those anyway. Well, they're all recast now. I know that's they, actually this one. I tried to buy a real one, and then they were like, "Nope." Yeah, they've been they've been discontinued for a while. Yeah. You know what I realized? There's no more fucking uh, um, resin terminators, Tartarus or fucking uh, You're right cataphracti. On I'm the, not on mad about that. Forge the cataphracti World. had awful spots where they connected right at the knee pad, where like the little armor thing comes up to start to yeah. come to the thigh, and they snapped off every goddamn time. That's crazy, man. But, um, so there's there's no generic Marine or Terminator stuff on Forge World anymore. Mark Six is and there Mark that? Five, but they got rid of Mark Two, which pisses me off. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna say it again. <clears throat> China. Yeah. <coughs> well, I mean, like, I guess that makes sense if that they're getting sold that way. It irritates me, man, because like I'd buy the real stuff, but they keep. Getting rid of stuff. Yeah, all the upgrade kits are going now. Like too. I'm going to LVO and I'm gonna probably drop like four or five hundred dollars on a bunch of Forge World stuff, but they won't let me buy the other stuff that I want. Yeah, it makes me mad. It happens. Huh, <sighs> makes me real mad. So the con, we got. Yeah, basically rules. nothing on yeah he's now, got is rules he in the book Definitely. he's in the book he's got rules for on foot and on a jet bike we know that he has some kind of always strikes first rule whether that is an initiative that's nine or ten 
or some kind of old school Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition style strikes first rule or what we don't know but he's got something where he's attacking first that which is that cool. might be i bet you that's something where if he only if he's on the bike and on on assault actually i saw some weird thing that actually kind of implied it was on foot really yeah it didn't directly state it but somebody made a comment about like why would he be slower on his jet bike huh i don't know and the other thing, so we know he's good in close combat. We've heard that tossed the books, around. Yeah. Um, well, I've even heard that tossed around today, but no details on it. Yeah. The how's, only there no other... de- how's there no details on that yet? Because Sanguinius, uh, Sanguinius has a model and the con doesn't, so I'm sure people are looking at that. Because without a model, nobody's playing the con, so who cares? Fuck that, I'd run an empty base. I yeah. run an empty base with just like a column of green stuff up the middle. Yeah, but there's and there's and there's tons of there's tons of third party stuff that God, would suit. I hate the third party. I mean, dude, I hate the third party shit too as well They're as well. So but I mean, I'm not. Then again, I'm not. I've had my Primark for two years now, and, and he's never died. Um, he's never died. That might be true. You know the worst part when we played that APOC game. Mm-hmm. I told my team at the very beginning. I said we have one goal. To kill I'm Russ. stomp on Russ with my Warhound. And you know what happened? My Warhound blew up, and Russ didn't even get out of his goddamn transport until, like, the last turn of the game. I don't think Russ even got on the board. He might not. I think have. the transport was off the board. Or, no, it might. He, he, I think he did towards the end. He, they outflanked, and, yeah. and, yeah. I thought that was the one thing I blew up with the Warlord was, like, the transport. But then we forgot to shoot the Warlord next turn, and I got real mad because I was like, damn it! He was out in the open, and I could have shot him with an entire Warlord. And I yeah, forgot. That sucked. Yeah. That's my whole goal. I just wanted to kill him once. Dude, yeah, what? he didn't even die the time when we played. Why is he a hater, bro? Because I just wanted to die once. Horus has died every game I played him in. You know, um, yeah, he's... He, he is not done well. Yeah, he, well, we'll get... We'll I haven't get, put uh, staring on the board yet. They're... That's probably that's probably that's the probably part probably of the it. part probably yeah. problem. Uh, we did, no, nah, you know what? I did play. We did play his uh, Tartarus guys as just Aaron. I think uh, maybe did not we? though. No, I thought we just pretended. It wasn't with you. It wasn't with you. Oh, it was with Alex. No, I can't remember. We did Roy the one time? I can't remember. I don't know. All I know is every time I played Horus, he's died like a little bitch mm-hmm. every time. To be fair, the one time though, he got six surprise Imperial Knights outflanking that didn't even exist on either list that showed up and shot his entire squad off the board. And he still made like 10 invuln saves or something dumb. I remember he like lived the entire shooting phase and mm-hmm. then got stomped. Um, I think Russ has the biggest trouble Russ ever had. So he killed a, he's killed Angron, fucked Angron, Angron up. Sucks, that was though. done. He was done. Angron needs a boost. Which he's, getting. he's killed Fulgrim, but Fulgrim did last a good a good bit. Yeah, doesn't he? Uh, well, he's got the three up. He's got the three up involved. Yeah. And doesn't he have something else with the weapon skill or initiative or some weird? It, th- that's if your weapon skill is higher, he gets additional attacks. So yeah. if, if your weapon skill five and he's you know he's weapon skill nine, he gets like four additional attacks or something shit like that. Yeah. Um, good old Fulgrim. He, see, he kill, He's killed Horus every time he's gone up against Horus. <laughs> Like um, easily, dude. easily, e- like easily for sure, for far sure. Far better than he should statistically even. I I want to say that I fought Gilliman. Gilliman might have been able to last. I Gilliman, can't, you I can't have remember. In a no, game you know turn. what? It wasn't Gilliman. I think what it was is I I think we played him against the new Gilliman rules. Like the 40K oh the forty k. Like I think we just rolled. I think he we just rolled that off for like. Oh, yeah, he's, it, no, that's. I mean, he was originally seventh, uh, seventh edition. Yeah, model. that's right. I forgot about that. Um, because that right. sword, we were like, I wonder how badass that sword was. But but he still he still got clipped. Yeah. And honestly, it comes down to, to some rolling. Yeah. The toughest one he had, the toughest fight he's ever had was some Galvor back and the guy with the spider eyes. Um, the guy with the staff. Oh, um, yeah, Zardu. Whatever his fucking whatever, name is. Yeah, the guy that gets the best one liner in the heresy ever. When the custodian with the uh, the uh, vow of silence yeah. pulls off his helmet and he goes, "I always fucking hated you," and throws the spear through his head yeah, yeah, before yeah. the Galvor back jump on him and rip yep. him apart. Yep, like breaks his vow of silence just to talk shit. <laughs> I love it. 
I thought the custodian broke his bell silence. He did. Okay, yeah, yeah, he yeah, pulls yeah. off his helmet and goes, I always fucking hated you. Yeah, some, yeah. You know, something to the equivalent of that. I don't think, clearly they didn't say fuck because, you know, it's a book, but it was implied. You were always a son of a bitch. I always yeah. thought you were a son of a bitch or something, something like that. Something like that. And then puts a spear, throws the spear right through his head. Yep. Um, and then just stands there and lets the Galvor back like, take him apart. And he's yeah. just like, ah, ha, 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 I don't That's give fucking, a fuck. That was tight, yeah. And actually, bird. um, and what's his face? Who was one of the the gal, the the captain? What's his name? Oh, uh, uh, God, uh, Argyll Tall. Oh my God, that's one of my he's, favorite. Yeah, characters. he's really cool. He had kept his sword, you know. Yeah, because he respected him. Yeah, his yeah. glaive even. He was. Whatever, he was. Like, he, they were boys. They were. Fr- they became yeah, friends. Yeah, they were buddies. They were like yeah. sparring partners and stuff. That actually, I gotta say, I hate the word bearers as a legion. Mm-hmm. Um, Argyll Tall is one of my favorite characters because yep. he's a bad guy, but he's not a bad guy. Yes. He's a traitor because he's loyal. Yes. It's a crazy thing. Like, even yeah. when he's possessed by a demon, he's still, like, a decent, loyal dude. Yeah, yeah. Tries to save what's-her-face. Right. Girl. And then Erebus kills him. Like, Erebus straight up kills him. Yeah, what? Oh, yeah. I haven't read that book Because he was still that book a good yet. dude. Yeah. And he was going to make the uh, Karn not go bad because he was going to be, like, a... St- uh, stabilizing influence on him or something. So Erebus yeah. is like, oh, what's that? Oh, shit, I put a knife in your back. My bad. Fucking Erebus. Erebus sucks, man. Like, the funny thing is, Erebus, like, everyone hates Erebus, even in the, the series. Like, even the bad guys hate Erebus and Lorgar and Corfaeron. Like, Horus straight up takes Erebus' face off. Like, literally peels his face so off. So what did, what did or- Her- uh, Erebus do to get that? Um, I think that's at the end of... I totally yeah, forgot. Yeah, I'm filing. My bad. Um, I think uh, it's at the end of the Cygnus stuff in Fear to Tread where he finds out that Erebus was trying to um, get the gods to replace Horus with Sanguinius. Oh. Because they were like, Horus is a bitch. Like, Horus sucks, I guess. And that's funny because that's prior to Horus' wounding and all that, too. So it's not like a Darth Vader thing where, you know, he gets wounded and then the Emperor's like, eh, get this car, to you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he comes back and is like all smug and Horace is like, come here. And just fucking peels his face off and is like, get the fuck out of here. And Which he also does to Lorgar. Because Lorgar tries to usurp him. Now that's at, that's at the end of um, Slaves of Darkness. Yeah, which I haven't read yet. Yeah, but I, think I, 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 did, I did read that. I did read that's that. That's a good one. I yep. have read chunks of it. But yeah, so basically, like, well, because that that demon guy, um, he learns Fulgrim's name, and yeah, he takes, yeah, yeah, uh, he yeah, takes over right, Fulgrim, right, and he's yeah. like, with Fulgr- you know, Fulgrim's in demon mode, he can beat Horus, you know, and yeah, because Horus never ascended. Nope, nope. That we know of. Yep, and uh, so they were gonna do. They were gonna, you know, jump his bones, so to speak. <laughs> I, I don't they, think uh, that means what you think it I, means. I know exactly what it means. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, then that guy he betrayed he betrayed uh, Lorgar, and Horus beat the shit out of him. Yeah, and then banished him, which yep. is why Lorgar basically isn't around for the remainder of the series. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting too, because I like you know the, 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 we've talked about this rumor forever, and I don't even know if it's a real thing anymore that one of the Loyalist is really a traitor the whole time, and one of the traitors is really a loyalist the whole time. Oh, um, yeah, that that was a forty k thing, though. Yeah, uh, and I don't know, and I don't know. Of course, it could be retconned or whatever else, but I do think it's it would be interesting. You know, we can hear that, right? <laughs> Stop it! It sounds really bad. Just trying to hobby. I hear you, man. Get some paint out. Start the, the painting is quiet. Yeah, I know, um, but I gotta prime this guy, and that's not quiet. Yeah, we'll do that in a second. So let, let's get through the rules, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll jump back into some other stuff. What what else do we have rule wise? Because there's some console stuff that's coming out. Yeah, there's five new console types that are generic. Um, two psychers, uh, and one of which. Well, hold, one second. F- having five, that's kind of crazy to me. Because what is there? There's only like eight consoles right now, anyway, right? Uh, Chaplain. Yep. Champion. Yep. Herald. Yep. Pravian. Yep. Primaris Medicae. Okay. Master of Signals. Six. Siege Breaker. Seven. seven. Um, Vigilator. What's the Vigilator? The Sabotage Guy. 
Okay. Eight. Um, oh, God. Did I say I said half? Yep. Uh, I know there's more than that. There's the, the Terran one. Like the... Oh, no. He's just a Centurion, which I don't... Well, yeah. it's well, still a council type, right? Because Centurion. No, he's not council. a console. Centurion's the only one that's not an actual console. Well, it, it, the Centurion is the base for all the consoles, correct? The base for consoles, but that's console what I'm is an option. I, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the Terran librarian. We already said that one. No, I didn't, didn't, we? I didn't think. That was like the first one you said. Chaplain Champion. Okay. Um, we had this book some. God damn it! Yeah, we got the books. Ugh, we're so bad at this here. Make some, just fill some air time. No, no, it's talking. it's fine. I got to hear my phone. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna go grab the book real. No, no, it's it's not no, in there. It's, it's up in my room. So it's fine. no, it's up in my bedroom. Yeah. You're never gonna find it. So we have the the Saturian with early Crusade honors. I don't think it counts. Nah. So librarian, master signals, champion, the Forge Lord, oh, Primaris fuck. Medicaid, siege breaker, chaplain, vigilator, Mori Tap, Mori Tap, Pravian. Delegatus. Yep. Harold. Herald. And that's it. So 12. So there's now 17. Yeah, that's crazy, man. God, I love this stupid dead game. It's awesome. Stop saying that. It's not dead, goddammit. Uh, it's not dead yet. Give it nine months. You think? It's like a reverse pregnancy, man. After nine months, you just get a death. Yeah, but you God, know what, that's man? morbid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but you know what, man? Then again, you could see a huge upswing. Like when Rust came out, there's a huge upswing in in 30k. Mm-hmm. I mean, now you could say the book came out and it Take had my money. It had Luke and lukewarm returns, but you know what the the custody stuff is still doing well. People love that shit. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Guess who has a full army list in the new book? If you guess Custodes, you're right. I couldn't guess Custodes. He kept on giving me chances. I, I kept on fucking that up. Yeah, because it's you said, so You said Legion. You got me, like, you said Legion, and he said, oh, not a Legion. Oh, uh, did I? Yeah. Oh, no. That's all right. But I, could, I couldn't unthink Legion. But who would have guessed of, of everything out there? I could even understand a reprint of some of the original Legion rules, but no. The Golden Boys get a whole freaking army list reprint. Now, what I am sh- shocked about them is that they... They're not even in the story. Well, we don't know. We no, we do know that. They're no, not even they, features there's, in it. There's a custody contingency on with every legion, right? No. Space Wolf, yes. No, they're with Space Wolves, they're with No, no, no. There Iron are Warrior. Space Wolves with every legion. There are not custodies. Why are there not legion. why are there Space Wolves with every legion? Because Oh, Russ sent everybody out to watch his brothers. Russ and Malkador sent right. everybody out to watch him because that's a big thing in Fear to Tread, which is the book i haven't read that one i gotta oh, read so that good, one I, know. I think jake bought my copy from me i gotta buy a new one that's all right but um excuse me alan <laughs> i don't even want to know well no that's what he goes by on facebook i, I know i know i know yeah but um yeah they uh this group of space wolves shows up right before they roll out to cygnus prime on horace's you know bullshit orders um and Space Wolves are like, oh, hey, like, we're just, uh, we, we like, gotta go there, too. Like, what's up, guys? And, um, there's some word bearers, too, that arrive separately. But, um, eventually, like, on Cygnus, after all the shit hits the fan, somehow something happens, and the Space Wolves are like, oh, by the way, we're here to kill you if you do anything out of line. To sing what is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're like, yeah, my, my orders are to put some bolt rounds into your forehead if you do anything goofy or psychic-y. Um... Oh, but and Sanguinius okay, is not a psyker. In the rules. Yeah, yeah he doesn't have any psyker psych- rules. Yeah, which, you know, rip. He should have had something to represent the foresight, but maybe that's his re-rollable info and save or something. Yeah, Whatever, he's awesome. Maybe. I mean, he's super good. Not going to complain at all. He's everything I thought he could be and more. Um, but, yeah, so the Space Wolves do that whole, like, oh, yeah, we're here to put bolt rounds on foreheads if anyone does anything too fishy. Um, and not, not for nothing, man. That you know, the one book with Gilliman with the, with the Space Wolves and everything, it made me like Gilliman better. That book, he's like, fine, yes, you you know, come on, it's fine. Not what happened with the Blood Angels. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Fucking... You want to know what happened? 
uh, Sanguinius drank their blood? What happened? Ah, uh, close. Sanguinius didn't, but um, aim at the flesh tear and some of his boys butcher and eat them. Really? Yup. That's pretty badass. The guys that were supposed to kill a Primarch got butchered and eaten by a tactical squad. Yeah, but he's a badass tactical squad. He's a badass motherfucker. Yeah, but they fucking killed him and eat them. Yeah, why not? They gotta hide the bodies. Is that the deal? No, because they went crazy. Oh, they okay. they went full vampire, full vampire. <laughs> they had a vampire weekend, as it were. Ooh, I made an indie band reference. <laughs> I don't think I've even heard them. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But um, yeah, they fucking kill them and eat them. <laughs> Which one does at times when you know yeah, it is what it is. You know, you you know that's spicy. I you know I fucking that's I do like uh. I do like Gilliman's swag in, in that one, for, okay, like, for, for real. I don't care. Well, it's funny because Sanguinius never even finds out about it because they lie to him. Oh, really? Because they're like, all right, man, like we're in the heresy. It's um, So Amit, Amit, however you say it, tries to fess up, uh-huh. and Ascalon basically crabs him and like slams him against a wall and is like, I already lied to Dad. We're in the middle of a fucking civil war, bro. We don't need any more goddamn animosity. So Sangu- Sanguinius, like, where are these guys? Yeah, he's like, what happened? And they're like, um, the, the, the demons ate him. I don't know what happened. Uh, last I saw, there were just a bunch of red butt cheeks sticking out of this pile <laughs> and just wet slapping sounds. <laughs> 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 and then there was no, and then there were no space wolves. <laughs> I think the space wolves, oh no, you know, they, they, uh, fought Cruz. Yeah, Cruz fucked them up trying to kill, um, he was Cruz was trying to kill Gillum's mother. What? Yeah, yeah. Whoa, so, that's fucked up. So they were yeah, Cruz got it. I missed that. Cruz got out. He came he came down in the lion ship. The lion didn't tell him that Cruz was there. He got he escaped, dropped all dropped all the drop pods down so they were you know Oh, they, so they're stuck on the ship. Yeah, he was stuck on the ship. He get so what happened is when he when he jumped out of warp, he could feel it. Cruz could. So he basically bore Curse. Ted I said Cruz. Cruz. Uh, yeah, Primark I, of the Eighth Legion. <laughs> <laughs> Senator um, from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> no, Curse. Conrad. I know. So, I so he, he actually goes out of the of the airlock, sets a trap. People come to try to. They knew it was he was going to try to escape. He gets in there, and basically, um, the lion, being the paranoid fuck that he is, has his whole <laughs> legion in drop pods, ready to make Planet Fall and McCrag if anything goes fishy. And so Conrad can Walks use his own uses his own DNA because they have the same DNA, and it reads it as as fucking the lion. The lion, and he launches all the drop pods. <laughs> so they respond, and actually, it's kind of cool because all the dark angels like they they surrender. They're like, listen, we're oh, gonna, that's yeah. right, I do remember that. And they scene line now. all up. So now they're all in the in the in the big camp, and, they, and Conrad is there setting booby traps and everything. <laughs> And then so they they reinforce the camp and it, the wolves are the only ones smart enough to realize like you guys are fucking idiots. He's setting you up. He's gonna go. He's gonna go where you least expect him. And he goes to kill Gilliman's mother. So, so Gilliman, does he? No, he doesn't. the The wolves saved her. But they all die, right? They no, they didn't all die. They're all fucked up. Yeah. I think I think he killed two of the the ten. And then out of nowhere, Vulcan comes out. He's fucking berserk. Oh, and he's rage. insane because and it's he just, after he yes, like falls he, through the atmosphere. Yes, and he just beat. He like soon as Conrad makes parent, planet fall, he awakes and he he uh, destroys the door <laughs> and just fucking beats the shit out of Conrad. He's basically, just but I think a big Conrad black Hulk. <laughs> Conrad gets sucked into a warp thing or something. He's someplace else on the planet at the end. Yeah, he there, escapes man, somehow. It's funny because like Kurz is one of the characters that like. I never really care about. I don't anyway, either. But he is hilarious in all of the books he's in. Like just the shit he pulls. Yeah. Because the he's lion like, almost the lion almost killed him. So did Corswain or whatever too. Hey, what happened to your sword, brother? I left it in the Primark spine. Yeah, like one of the best lines. In any of this he's book. he's an interesting cat for sure. Yeah, he's batshit crazy. Yep, and he's been batshit crazy before Horus. That's that's a crazy bit about it. He's insane. He's not evil. He's yeah. so insane that he's a bad guy because he just doesn't. There, there is that one really cool bit where Sanguinius has upset the future, and Kurz like almost loses his mind because for the first time he can't see all the different, 
options or what what are so he like there's he's a movie. convinced that fate is just like written right well no no he sees all the different options and so and as he can like basically meditate and, and see like if I do this if I do that what's going to happen so there is some flexibility but he's got to he's got to basically work through it but at one point Sanguinius do, does something and basically Heisenberg oh, uncertainty principles his ass and yeah. like he's like he's like holy shit I I know nothing. What, I know nothing of what's going to happen, and he like Panics. he becomes scared. Yeah, yeah, it's really badass. Well, I also love the part where like he tries to make Sam Guinness kill him. His response is like get fucked, and he stuffs him in a coffin. Yep. Or like a stasis pod. He shoots him out, shoots space. Him out into space. Yeah. So I don't know how he gets out. Like, that's the Somebody last. Somebody probably finds him or something. Well, that's the last place we hear of him in the heresy, and I think he disappears after that for a while until he gets. Killed I don't think he's on something. Terra. Yeah, because he no, abandoned. He's on Terra. He abandoned his Legion a long time ago. He's like, oh, yeah, get, I mean, you guys the get Night fucked. Lords just yeah, there's a cool Night Lord story about this guy that he got put into the maze that uh, Conrad made or Protoraba made for Vulcan. Conrad. You know. Conrad made for Vulcan. Yeah, no wonder. Well, Protoraba built it. Blackout rages when it curses yeah. up. Yeah, it's fucking dope, man. I hates that. Vulcan. Hates that motherfucker. <laughs> So continue with the rules. Yeah, I don't even remember where we're. I just uh, I'm the, actually the currently types. getting hypnotized by Batgirl's uh, lovely hips. Oh yeah, man, those hips don't lie, dude. Those hips don't lie. So it's one of my wife's favorite posters. Yeah, it's sexy. She loves like the pinup shit. Yeah, man, pinups are what's up. Yep. Uh oh. <clears throat> so con, I think that's where we were, right? The con. We were, we were at the uh, consult. The oh, the, yeah, we talked about consoles. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got two psychers. My understanding is that one of them is a psyker and trainee. Okay. And the other one, I believe, is an older, more experienced psyker. Maybe a master level. But that has not practiced, and finally was like, hmm. There's demons and shit running around. I think the rules are out the window. Now, when does Sanguinius get, start using uh, Psychers again? Because I uh, haven't read much of him. In at seven... Cygnus, prior okay. to the Heresy, even. Because keep in mind, Cygnus happens before Isfahan. Oh, does it? Cygnus is like, See, I, if I, I know remember nothing, right... I know nothing about that if story. If I remember right, Cygnus is just after Prospero because the wolves know... That Magnus fucked off and fucked up and all that, but they don't yet know that Horus is a traitor, because that's one of the big things. Is okay. they know something's fishy, because Amit goes, you know, Horus led us into a trap, right? Like Horus is the one that sent us here. This is clearly not at all what was described, or you know, he told us this whole Nephilim race was going to be here. And like all this shit was happening. All right, yeah, so, give, so give me the whole. Give me, start from the beginning. I don't all know right. that story at all. <clears throat> Excuse my cough. <clears throat> um, basically, after this funky mission with the Alpha Legion to like purge some orcs or something like that, where the Blood Angels are hanging out in this nebula, and the Alpha Legion are like, "You guys stay here. We're gonna go inside this nebula and fuck shit up." And th- they disappear, and all of a sudden, just all these orc ships and stuff come out. Like on fire and just running away from nothing, and then no Alpha Legion. Mm-hmm. The Blood Angels just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Um, Horus is like, hey guys, um, so you remember how this one time on this one planet, I saw some guy fall to some kind of crazy genetic flaw, the Red Thirst, and then Sanguinius kind of snapped his neck, and y'all were like, shh, don't talk about it. Me, Horus, I might have found a cure for it. Okay. Those same guys we were fighting then, they've got some crazy technology that'll cure it. And they are on this planet that's on the other side of the galaxy, and no one's been to it for a while. Need you to go over there and check it out for me. And take all your dudes. Okay. All your dudes. I didn't say I wanted a lot of bacon and eggs. I said I wanted all your bacon and eggs on Cygnus Prime. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, you like the Ron Swanson? I did. So, I did. uh, Sanguinius, being best friends with Horus, is like, all right, word, thanks, homie. 
you know, I appreciate that. Watching out for me. Don't tell dad that I'm fucked in the head. And uh, they blast on out there. Uh, some space wolves show up and hitch a ride. And uh, some word bearers show up and are like, hey, what's up, guys? We're all totally, totally cool. We're all loyal, too. And uh, check out our snazzy new red armor. We match. Damn it. But um, so they pop out to Cygnus. They drop out a warp. And the whole system's dead. Like, dead. Like, there's nothing there. There's nothing alive. It's a burned-up rock of a planet. Mm -hmm. And they go down, and they try to land, and I want to say that's when the demons pop out, because I know the red tear crashes. Like, gets blown out of the sky, and crashes into the planet, and is fucked. Now, is that that the... Oh, yeah, that's the... Gloriana class battle cruiser. Oh wow! The big bad. There are only twenty. No wait, eighteen. Because of these, you know, in the universe, and this one gets ripped out of the sky and cast down in wrecks, and is not pilotable. Like is destroyed. How did it, that's just the demons? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know about that one. So they land there, and they're like, well, land. Crash land. Um, it's a controlled fall. Um, they get out and they kind of have a little meeting, and that's when Amit's like, "Dude, we got fucking betrayed. Like Horus fucked us." And Sanguinius tries to choke him to death. Oh, really? He's like, "Don't you fucking say that, you little bitch!" So he's black raging already. Well, no, not really. He's just best boys with Horus. I mean, Horus, him and Horus were best friends. Not like how all the Primarchs are like, and they all liked Horus. Like, him and Horus were best buddies. Yeah. Um, and, uh... It's funny that Horus never tried to talk to him. You know what I mean? Like, tried to, didn't try to bring him. He knew he was him. too good. He basically thought Sanguinius was naive. Like, basically too well-intentioned. Mm. To have to do the bad things that were going to save you. To make the humanity. hard choices. Yeah. Yeah, that Sanguinius was just, he was a great guy. He was you know, all right, so guy. we know that we know that the Emperor had roles for every Primarch after the unification, not the unification, mm-hmm. the Great Crusade. Um, you know, Magnus was going to sit on the chair and whatnot. <laughs> the electric chair. Yeah. Uh, Vulcan would be his, like, weapon smith type of thing. Yeah. Um, what, was, what was uh, Sanguinius' job? He was supposed to be basically Hope. For humanity is supposed to be. I mean, he's just going to be like, he's just the figurehead. So Gilliman was going to run shit. Yep, like the statesman. Horus was supposed to fall, though. That was the thing. Remember, the heresy was planned. Yes, kind Horus of. was supposed to die. Horus was supposed to lead the armies and die. Okay. Because that was his, he was the general. Mm-hmm. So he needed to die. And Sanguinius, I, as I understand it, was supposed to then, I think become maybe he was supposed to die as well and become a martyr but he was definitely supposed to be hope for humanity itself you know like he represented the best in humanity he was the emperor's vision for a better you know existence i wonder if he was supposed to be like the The not the religious head but the the symbol yeah, you know what I mean. The spirit, like the the spirit of the empire. Or something. Yeah, we got. I got to look into that again because that is yeah. interesting to me that he had the plans for everybody. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because and I've definitely heard that a bunch. I, um, Angron was expiring. We know that number twelve. Um, because there's that scene in Master Mankind where he's digging through Angron's brain with Malkador, and he's like, "Ah, oh, it's yeah." Broken. But they, but he, everybody had an original purpose before that shit happened. That's true, and he was irritated because he was like, "God damn it! Like, I need my chainsaw." And some asshole forgot to put oil in it, and the motor's all burned out. And god damn it! <laughs> that shit was fucking dope. It was though. hilarious. Though number twelve is deficient, but um, yeah, Magnus was supposed to sit on the chair. He's the one that you got to sit on the toilet to keep the python from coming out of the... <laughs> but, not, but not for nothing. I don't think he's got to sit there forever, right? He just He's going to be running that chair. You know I, I mean? guess, yeah. I don't know. There's some crazy shit with that in Master of Mankind, too. Like when the Emperor first fills up the... Uh, fills the gas tank with psychers and goes into the warp and is basically just a human being melded with, like, a sun. No, but he gets off the chair. Yeah, he, he just. Well, I think well, while yeah, he's he sits in the... in the chair. They put 
all the psychers in the freaking toaster. Yeah, to keep him, to keep it powered while he's gone. Well, no, he drains them into himself too, partially. Does he? Yeah, he gets all jacked up on Mountain Dew and dead dead souls because mm. that's part of when he steps in the warp and he's just like. Or the webway, and well, he no, just like he raises explodes. Like, he raises like undead people, including Ferris Manus. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ferris Manus was designed to be the prime arc of Legion to the Damned. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was cool though. That's the first like canon showing of the Legion to the Damned, and it's just like a giant sapphire flaming. That'd be dope if they brought him back as Legion of the Damned. Character. Cool. Yeah, everyone's making jokes about, oh, it's a dreadnought with Ferris Manus' head. In. No, he'd be Legion of the Damned, dude. Like, read some books. Yeah, yeah I'm with well, you. Well, Ferris has that. come back twice. Look at the clones, right? Oh, that too. He's come back multiple times. Yeah. He came back as a ghost in the webway prior to the battle for Terra. Okay. He comes back as the Sapphire King, which is a demon. No, I don't know about that. Yes. All right, give me the poop on that. Uh, I'm very limited on it, but it is a book... Where it's in a book, and he comes back as a being referred to as the Sapphire King. And I want to say he's a Slanesh demon, but it basically, it's the, I want to say it's the amalgamation of, like, the guilt and disappointment of, like, the Iron Hands with that whole, like, you know, Ferris was weak and failed because he wasn't robot enough, you know? Because keep in mind, the Iron Hands get fucked in the head after Isfahan. Like, that whole Legion just goes nuts. Yeah, I mean, they and, go, like, and, and, some of the, and some of the Shattered Legion guys end up becoming kind of traitors. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the Iron Hands are, like, Artek, 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 Moore, whatever his name is, the guy that becomes the uh, Crimson Talons. Um, like, he's a loyalist, but, like, the shenanigans and stuff that go on with, like, the clans and stuff like that. I mean, the Iron Hands just go apeshit. Like, they completely... They're, in a lot of ways, the loyalist counter to the Emperor's Children or the Night Lords, where they fracture. Like, the Iron Hands just go to shit, you know? And they're all fighting amongst each other and going nuts and betraying each other and just being douchebags. Yeah, at one point, they fuck up some Salamanders as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, they kill a whole bunch. They fight each other a bunch. I mean, they're loyalist in name only, basically. And there's a difference in the group that stayed in Medusa and then the ones who who survived Istvan as well, I think. I mean, they're they're fractured. Oh, yeah. Like, completely fall apart. All the clans are separate. A bunch of shit. There's definitely at some point where there's this huge mutiny and a bunch of people get killed and, like... Yeah, I haven't read I haven't read hardly anything about the Iron Hands cuz they've never they've never really inspired me. Honestly, like you doing the Legion, I've gotten a little into them cuz I've been kind of messing around with some of the stuff with you, but yeah, I've never really been fascinated by them. They're kind of the forgotten Legion in a lot of ways. Yeah, and even in even in 40K, they never got a proper character, they never got a yeah, proper got Smash book. Fucker. Well, but he's not a proper character. But yeah, I get it. Um, it's funny too, because in eighth edition now it's basically Blood Angels got that, but Blood Angels also already have like all the characters. It's like them and Ultramarines and uh, Space Wolves that have dibs on like and Dark Angels. All right, so let's get back. Let's get back to the rules. Yeah, we I keep, keep on. Drifting we keep on. Drifting. Oh That's well, fine. I never finished this Cygnus Prime thing because oh, we've yeah. tangented off our tangent, off our tangent. So they show up, you know, crash land on the planet, controlled descent, um, have this little spat with Amit, who's like, bro, Horus betrayed you. Like, sorry, I gotta be the one to say it, but, like, Horus fucking betrayed you, dog. And Sanguinius is like, don't you fucking say that! And, like, choke, like, half kills him. Chokes him out. Um, but then they go and look around the and planet. He's, and he's like, harder, daddy. What? Yeah, nothing? Right. Nothing? <laughs> nothing! Um, so they eventually go to, like, explore this planet. And it used to be, like, a full-out, developed, like, industrial world. Like, a, a nice place. Lots of factories and stuff. And now there's nothing. The whole planet is basically just destroyed cityscapes. And that's it. And ash. They get attacked by the cities themselves, come alive. and like the, like, like the buildings? Oh, yeah. Like peel themselves out of the ground and become these giant monsters made out of buildings. That's interesting. Like demon. Yeah, it's weird. It's very weird. Like assault marines fighting a highway is a very bizarre scene but eventually they show up and they get to the cathedral of the mark which is a massive 
temple to chaos undivided made if i remember correctly out of the skulls of the entire population of the planet and that's where they run into kairos the perverse and kabantha however you say his name um the two demons that are like hello and they basically try to corrupt sanguinius and he's like nope not gonna do it and they're like okay and then the Blood Angels Legion goes insane and Sanguinius passes out. Really? Yeah, like Red Thirst. They go, and all the Blood Angels go insane, and Sanguinius just hits the deck. So they drag him out of there. And that's the point where the Flesh Terrors, the Fifth Company, are wandering around with the Space Wolves, and all of a sudden they're just like, Rah! and just rip them apart and eat them alive. Huh. Which is... Kind of baller. I mean, it sucks, but, you know, I'm picturing them just kind of going ape shit and, like, pulling their helmets off. And, I mean, a space marine eating another space marine alive is a pretty crazy image. For sure. Yeah, and I, I, I do like the fact that the Blood Angels have that dark so, thing. So how did the scene when just wake up from this and then everything's no. okay? That's when the Legion as a whole goes, uh, you know... We got these guys that, like, have some crazy mental powers. Maybe, maybe, maybe they should try to think about maybe possibly trying to, you know, sort so of do So not something. everybody succumbed to this at the same time. There's different levels of... Uh, you, what happens, if I remember correctly, is one of the few survivors that they find is a blank and if I remember gotcha. correctly, like I know for a fact that one of them is a blank. And if I remember correctly, some of these guys are around her and that's how they don't go crazy. So they get all the librarians together and they're like, all right, like we're going to damn ourselves in the eyes of the emperor to save daddy. And they um, basically all like kind of link hands kumbaya and go into the warp and basically fight off all these demons and drag Sanguinius back into his body um, but they burn out, like, they straight up just, like, burn up and die as this is happening, um, and they finally, like, pull Sanguinius back, and he, he wakes up, kind of, and he's like, ooh, you boys fucked up, but, uh, <laughs> thinking light all the shit that's going on, you know, maybe the rules don't matter anymore. And this is all still before Istvan. Yes. Or happening during the same time. Uh, about the same time. Um, I That's crazy. Say. I don't know why but, I've never read this book. It's It came out kind of early on. Yeah. I want to say it's like book 20 or something. And then just, I mean, there hasn't been hardly anything about the Blood Angels, really. They've been featured in like four books and most of the time as minor characters. No, yeah, more than I mean, that, five or six. Well, they're in the Ruined Storm and stuff like that. Ruined they're, Storm, they're in Master Mankind. One, a single Blood Angel is in Master Mankind. Yeah. I mean, Sanguinius, you see him in the first three, on and off. With yeah, those. but usually just, like, talking to somebody. Yeah. Like, yeah. he doesn't do anything. Like, the Blood Angels, as a legion, don't really do anything. In they got fucked up on murder. We know that. Bad. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, let's get, get back to the rules, then. Yeah. I'll have to um, go back and read that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's a good book. Check it out, everybody. Reference, of course, to that classic line where angels fear to tread. Book is titled Fear to Tread. I get, I get, yeah. I get clever jokes. I like those little dumb things like that, though. They're cute. They're adorable. But um, all right, rule wise, so we got the five console types, two librarian types, psychers, I should say, not necessarily librarians. Um, then we've got a pravian for dreadnoughts, is how it was described, which I think is kind of rad. Now we don't know if this is a dreadnought character or a or tech a for. Dreadnoughts. That allows you to take more dreadnoughts, maybe. Then we've got um, a warmonger, which is supposed to be between a centurion and a praetor, but I don't quite understand what that means because a praetor just has plus one and a couple stats. And access to a paragon blade, which a centurion now, or a champion now has, so I don't. I don't really know what it is. In the Master Legion, you got the Delegatus that does that. So I don't maybe, really know maybe what it's, it means. Maybe it's for to take a, a higher level HQ guy, but focus it on the, the shooty stuff. You know? That would be cool. But then the other one 
is the higher level character that's focused on shooty stuff. Oh, there's that then. The, then uh, Master Crafts, Heavy Weapon Squad's weapons. Now, I'm okay with this as long as it's not Master Crafting, master crafting freaking Elite Squads because then, then the artillery guys would just be too powerful. Oh, God. They're, they're already disgusting. Well, keep in mind, is. Master Craft is only one reroll. So even if you fire, you know, a four-shot quad mortar, not saying that it will be able to buff them, but just going with that assumption, you fire a four-shot quad mortar, you only get to re-roll one that's, of those That's misses. a valid point. Granted. Well, each one of them gets to re-roll one. Correct. But you have yeah. to roll them all separate. Because how do you know your three misses came from three? Oh, no, yeah, but you're going to do that anyway. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Different color dice. That's why I own, like, 500 dice. No, actually, that's... That's how I do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you'd have to roll four, well, three different colors of four dice each. Oh, it works. Yeah, and then it you works. just go, oh, I had a red miss, a green miss, and no blue misses. Um, but, so that should be pretty cool. Um, I don't tend to play a lot of shooty squads, shooty infantry squads, I should say. I do play shooty, like, other stuff. Um, but yeah, so, blah, blah, blah. That's some stuff. Oh, I heard mixed stuff that there might be another jet bike squad, but I think that was regarding white scars because we know white scars have a unique jet bike squad. Yeah. They have unique terminators, which if I understood the rules correctly, they're a command squad that gets access to the glaives, which are fucking bullshit good. Yeah. Um, AP2 on the charge, at initiative, get fucked. Super mad. Although I'm okay with White Scars being good in close combat, to be honest. No, yeah, for sure. Like, I'm alright with that. They're kind of ninja... Well, no, they're goddamn Mongolians tearing down my shitty wall. Um, and then they get a super cool um, javelin variant. Yeah, it's now got, this this I think is gonna be I think Gray is really gonna like buy this. it. I want to play White Scars because of this. It's yeah. so sexy. It's like an up armor javelin with top mounted um, hunter killer missiles, like in the single shot tubes, which are so cool. Yep. Um, then it's got twin Reaper auto cannons on the side, where like the last cannons or the uh, cyclone missile launchers would normally be, and then it's got like an up armored elongated front with an assault cannon sticking out almost like the land speeder tempest does anyone remember those i don't think they've been sold yeah. in a while but um i don't know is if it's a curies or an elastus elastarius whatever pattern assault cannon aka six shots or four with jamming i'm gonna say six probably mm-hmm. all i know is it looks rad it's kind of dark angels it's like the dark angel super speeders kind of mashed up with the land speeder tempest mashed with the javelin like it's ex- yeah. longer than the I- javelin. i'm now I'm interested if they're going to be extra Ravenwing speeders, or if this is something. Because I would expect be... Dark Angels to get a whole book dedicated to them with all six of the hexagrabba, you know, all of the different wings. Yeah, yeah. Fire. I mean, and the thing about it is, is for the Dark Angels, they should have more shit than everybody else because Correct. they're older than everybody. You else. should be able to play basically any play style with Dark Angels. Yes, yeah, and but I think you that's should fluffy. always lose one d three rules. Or 1d3 victory points at the end. Why is that? Well, that's their rule. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, if you have less units than your opponent at the end, you lose, or your opponent gains 1d3 victory points. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's real bad. It's Fuck real it. bad. I like it's it. Hilarious. Let's do it. Yeah, I know, right? Access to more, but they always lose. Um, What else? They've got um the usual, you know, two Predators, one in Mark II, one in Cataphracti Armor, which I initially bitched about, but Adam did explain to me, and I now agree, Cataphracti Armor's older. Yep. Just because dark, uh, blah, 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 just because White Scars love to run around and, you know, feel the wind through their hair. They never came back home to get the new shit. They never came back home to get the new shit until they got the Mark VII shit at Terra. Um, plus the Cataphracti guy's dope, because he has a top knot, and then he has three ponytails sticking out of the top no. of the armor. <laughs> it's all. Three ponytails is the only way to go with a top knot. Right. Like, he's got basically four four tufts of hair, which is dope. I mean, it's super great. And the he's got the Cyberhawk and the Glaive. 
and so like it's a it's a cool model. I I kind of want to do white scars now, man. Yeah. Oh, that'll be what my fourth legion, fifth legion, something like that. <sighs> um, then they've got a leviathan, which I don't like. Well, because, I like it if it's a special <sighs> thing and it's a punishment for the guys who've yeah, that would be cool. But I mean, it is hard written into the fluff for a long time that they do not like being in dreadnoughts. Yep. Like they consider it. Like, to never put the wind on your face. Isn't isn't there something in one of the Damocles books or something where some guy, like they have to stuff him in there because like they need him and he's like, why? I might be remembering that wrong, but I thought there's some scene where they. Put, I don't. I like, wouldn't. I some wouldn't. guy wakes up and is like, no, why did you do it? And they're like, sorry, bro, we need you. I don't know. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I know that there's some. I know there's a one Iron Warriors book that he's a, this guy's a dreadnought. And he fucking likes it. Oh, that's uh, is that that one anthology? I think I just read that one where they're in like that upside down fortress. I can't remember, man. Yeah, that's a good book too. It's a I lot of stuff with Purdy. There's a lot of good Horus Heresy books. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what else? They've got then rules for the Eben something. They're the Terminators with the glaives. They get models. I don't think they get unique rules beyond being a command squad with glaives. But, mm-hmm. like, whatever. I mean, that's about as different as a lot of Terminators are. Oh, and they don't take a Force Orc slot, so that's super cool. Um, they get a unique character that's got... Oh, where's my phone? Yeah, I'm doing a great job, guys, right? Please like and subscribe and tell me how good a job I'm doing it. <laughs> or don't <laughs> really unsubscribe from Nerd Rage Radio. Or it really helps me out. It really helps me out. Um, uh, sorry. Also, just gotta say, the White Scar's art in the book is awesome. Like, I'm super jazzed up about it, to be honest. Oh, the Terminators, the Eben Kashig Terminators, and they look really cool. Uh, alright, they get a character, Quinn Ka, Q-I-N space X-A, sorry, I cannot pronounce that to save my life. Tartarus Armor, Iron Halo, Grenade Harness, the Tales of the Dragon, super cool swords. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, Legion of Stars, White Scars, Independent Character, Master Legion, Counterattack, and Furious Charge. Nice. Space Wolves are kind of getting dicked a little bit, I feel No, like. I don't feel I don't think so. I mean, yeah, you're My, a unique e- units. Everybody sure. has counter uh, counterattack. If, That's true. That's it, true. Yeah, just one Whereas guy has, individual yeah, stuff in this yeah. gets it. It's just funny because I've looked at White Scars and Blood Angels combined, and they're basically just Space Wolves are better. But you're right. Space Wolves, everybody's like that. Whereas with this, it's just some. Um, Master of the Kishig um, and Warlord, um, he gets the Chosen of Kagan trait rather than rolling randomly. Weapon skill six, so he's one worse than Rolderon. BS4... Strike four, toughness four, four wounds, which I think is one better than Roller on. Yeah. Yes. Um, initiative six, which is even or one better. Five attacks, which is better. Um, leadership ten, two up save, master the Kashig. Uh, any army that includes includes Quinza, Quinca, have you say it? Sorry. Um, can select a Legion command squad with Terminator bodyguard upgrade to represent the Kashig. This unit does not use up an HQ slot. Oh, that's funny. They spelled it use up a HQ slot. That's grammatically incorrect. Unless the British say H, a HQ, which I don't think they do. Forge world grammar. Um, any model in the unit chosen to represent the Kashyyyk may replace their power weapon with a power glaive for plus 10 points. A little spency, but at initiative AP2 is dope. Yeah, it is. But they have to be deployed with Quinha as part of the unit at the start of the game. But they could split off, so who cares? Tales of the Dragon are two separate Dow blades used together as a match pair, and the bonus for wielding two melee weapons has already been included in Quinha's profile. Okay, so he has the same amount of attacks as we're older on. As a master, the many forms associated, blah, 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 with these exotic weapons, two forms of attacks. You select one at the start of each assault phase. Um... Split the mountain, strength plus three. So on the charge, strength eight. That's pretty nasty. Eight. AP2, melee, unwieldy, mastercrafted. Unwieldy kind of stuff. All right, so basically turn into a power fist. 
Mastercraft preference. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah, okay. Um, and if you didn't charge, it's ever so slightly worse because it's strength seven. Um, part the horse's mane. Strength plus one, so five or six on the charge. AP two, melee, precision strikes, which means you pick who gets hit by them on a six. That's pretty good. Oh, you got an apothecary in your squad? Boop! No, you don't. Now I'm going to allocate everything else to the dude that now no longer has a feel no pain safe. What's up? So that's pretty good. And Mastercrafted again. So pretty good. Warlord trait, chosen the uh, Hagen. Um, once per game, the controlling player may choose to either bring a single eligible friendly unit into play from reserves automatically or have it remain in reserve. So if you won't have, like, let's say a flyer <clears throat> that's like anti air, like, let's say you have a. Uh, Xiphon, and your opponent has no tanks, but you know he's got a flyer that hasn't come in yet, and you roll, and your Xiphon comes in, you can go, nah. That could be useful. That could be really useful. Cause or if times... you're trying to neutralize an anti-air before. Or, right. You right. know, you want them to get pulled back a little bit more. Yeah, or, exactly. Or, if you want to keep them in past turn four. Yes. And bring them in turn five. Think about them apples. Can you do that on turn five? I don't remember. Well, I mean, I everything everything automatically in comes in on turn five, on turn four, right? Is that it? It doesn't matter. Oh, oh yeah, one, I guess yeah. you could say no. So you could keep something out, yeah, and then and then could. bring it in, depending on you know where you're at. If there's going to be six turns, then bring it in last minute to you know to what? steal an objective. Hold on, real quick too, because once per game, the controlling player may choose to bring in automatically instead of rolling or have it remain in reserve. Theoretically, you could bring something in round one, right? I guess no, because that's not instead of rolling, because you don't roll turn one. Yeah. But turn two, like, let's say let's say we're playing one of our games, and you got your stupid Spartan rolling up full of boys, but you don't push it all the way forward turn one. You leave it back a little, play conservative. I could be like, I'm going to bring in my lightning right now and hit that with six armor band missiles. Yep. Oops. Shouldn't have held it back. So that that's useful. I like that. So both of these, uh, like, Praetors, both Ralderon and Quinn Ha, sorry, I'm totally butchering that, like, they have some nice tactical options, too. Like, they're yeah, good absolutely. in the fight, but they've also, they seem like they got some useful options. No, absolutely, I agree. Um, I like that. Um, otherwise, we know they get some kind of jet bike unit. All right, which, the cons rules have got to be posted by now, man. I'm looking, man. I am in the 30K White Scars Facebook group. I just refreshed it. I wonder if he's not in the book. Do we? Are we? No, he's in the book. He's. They've shown pictures of him. They just. Come on, give me the con. Everyone's posting the Praetor rules, but nothing of the con. I will say this: the art for him though looks dope. It does. He's got like some crazy like eye makeup on and stuff, and like, like he looks scary. He, you know what he looks like? He looks like Jason, uh, uh, Aquaman. Count oh, Drago. Yeah, he yeah, looks yeah. like him with like a shaved head. He's got like a goatee, some real strong cheekbones, stuff like that. Big top knot, bunch of eye makeup on. Dreamy, big, dreamy eyes. He, dreamy eyes, but aggressive. Well done eyebrows. He paid to have them done. A uh, bunch of furs. He got on him threaded by one of those uh, Israeli ladies in the mall. So, he's a uh, he's a pretty scary looking dude. I've also got a picture of this Alpha Legion guy who has half his face burned off. I'm is it Alpha that. Legion? I or? think it is. Might be, might be White Scars. All right. Her. Yeah, actually, give me one second. I'll text her and be like podcasting. <laughs> You're, I'm recording again. That's fine. <laughs> awesome podcasting. Yeah. I'm tight with my family. What's up? No, I'm, I'm with you, bro. No, I know. I'm just, I'm pretending I care. So, is there anything else that we, uh, that we missed out on, or did we get everything pretty much? <sighs> no, Except we didn't get everything. I've been friggin' jumping. Really? There's more. More. Just wait. Uh, Death Sworn get models. They do. Um, they look what good. What else do we got? So, White Scars get a unique jet bike unit. Don't know anything about them. I think someone posted something for them at one point, but I can't find it now. Not on any of the groups, including the White Scars one. Um, they get them, they get the Terminators, and they get that super cool speeder that I really like. Um, let's see. Blood Angels get the crazy um, Contemptor in Candius. Dreadnought with the two blades of perdition, which they did, by the way, um, clarify 
They only do double wounds on multi-wound models, so that doesn't mean you can go and swing 10 times and kill 20 orcs. Okay. Which is a bummer, um, but reasonable. Um, that Dreadnought can deep strike or move like a jump unit and has two blades of perdition. That's crazy. It's fucking dope, which means it'll be strength 7, because they're strength plus 1 if I remember right. No, maybe not. No, you know what? They're at their normal strength. So strength six. Still hit Marines on twos. So still saw that. And, that's and your bodyguard. And it's minus one to, to wound, right? Yeah. Because the Blood Angel. Uh, no, because it's a Dreadnought. Don't Dreadnoughts not get that? Uh, I don't think they get the Legio. Yeah, they don't get the Legio Star Ace rule. Unless they change it, which would be know. lovely. Either way, though, you're wounded Marine, normal Marines on twos. That's okay. fine. Yeah, whatever. Throw some rag grenades in there, and now you're killing multi wound marines on twos. Um, can deep strike or move like a jump unit, which I've heard is only once. Um, oh, they only get one blast. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, if you look at it, it's giant nozzles, a little fuel tank stuck to the back of the. All right, legs, so that that I think makes more sense. If they're jumping around the whole the whole game. Yeah, that would be fucking bullshit. Yeah. I say that as somebody that played Librarian Dreadnoughts back in the day and loved that they could fly. Hell, they can fly an eighth again. Can they? Yeah. They just gate themselves a little place? No, they can fucking fly, man. They can cast a power and they can fly. You can have a librarian dreadnought jump up and stab a plane out of the sky, which is super cool. Mm. Um, Maybe. Blood Angels then get the um, <clears throat> the Crimson Paladins, which are the um, Cataphracti Terminators with shields. Yeah. Now, are they actual storm shields? Do we know? I don't know. I'm actually trying to look now and see. Do they have a three up or they just give a plus one? Well, I guess Storm Shields. I mean, it would be, a, plus, this, it would be a three up if it was a plus one to Cataphract. Well, anyway. yeah, because I think Storm Shields and Seventh and uh, Heresy don't give their own three up in Vulnerable. It depends. They just give a plus. Is there? Which one? Like the, the, so there's Dragon Scale Storm Shields, which give you like a re roll or some shit. No, they, I, I'm pretty sure the Dragon Scale gives you plus one. Maybe so. And then... In the same... I think the the custody ones, you can re-roll it. Uh, the invulnerable. Wow, okay. I just saw the Dreadnought is apparently weapon skill 6. Okay. With 5 attacks. That's kind of... No bonus on strength, so I, I caught myself there. Yep. Um... Yeah, I'm flipping through the stuff just got posted. I uh, yeah, I really want to see if those are swords or shields, or um, uh, storm shields. I mean, no big whoop. Oh, whoop. okay, hold on. Um, comes the paladins. Shields are minus one. To strength in melee? That can't be right. Oh, probably to incoming strength? I mean, maybe. They have a 5-up feel no pain. If they're outnumbered, it goes up to a 4-up. I don't... This doesn't quite seem right, to be honest. Minus 1 strength Could be good. In melee. But it's also saying they come in a squad of 3, which they get sold in a pack of 5. I'm not sure Do they? I believe this. Yeah. Um, that's all I'm seeing for this. But um, swords... And the one guy is a spear. I'm going to assume that it's kind of a mini uh, spear of Telesto. Five mana skull squad, two up armor, power swords with either plus one initiative or sunder and rending. Do damage on deep strikes, troop choice with Sanguinius. That matches what I've seen elsewhere. Angel's Tears, they're destroyers with Volkite Serpentos, two of them, which is nice. And destroyers, by the way, are getting uh, major points drop. Down to 60 points base, plus 5 per uh, guy for jump packs, and some other shit. But we don't know that 100% yet. Um, there is a Destroyer character, which is pretty cool. Who's that, who's that going to be for, though? Blood Angels? Blood Angels. Okay. Um, I have no idea what that guy is, because he does not exist in the books, to my knowledge. No rules for Azkalon. But that's fine, because guess what didn't get rules? What, what iconic unit didn't get rules? The one that everyone uh, the expected. Sing the Secondary guard. guard have no rules, no models, no character. Yeah, it's going to be The fun. official reason given was that they weren't featured heavily in the books, 
and so they didn't deem it necessary to give them models or rules. Hmm. Quote, you can just use the Crimson Paladins with Sanguinius. I mean, I don't disagree. If you could see my face right now. I don't disagree with that. I don't. I mean, the thing is, man, what you could do is you could roll Crimson Paladin with them. And if you want to use Sanguinius Guard, just fucking do it. They can't jump. But you don't want Sanguinius. They're slow. slow. They're Tartarus? Or Cataphracti? Cataphracti. Yeah, but you know what? Sanguinius isn't going to be rolling with anybody. That's the other thing, man. Their their suggestion was, if you want Sanguinary Guard, just use a command squad. Oh, wait, they can't take jump packs. Oh, uh, yeah. To be fair, Adam's had to listen to this bitch Yeah, but you know what? You, you, and we don't know the Legion special rules. It might say that it might say <clears> that <throat> that's command true. squad could take jump packs. That is true. Um, yeah, I'm really butthurt that like we don't have more info right now. I'm, I'm bitching a little bit here. But that's what happens when we only have... Uh, Anusha's desk copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm flipping through trying to find more uh, more stuff. Oh, I might have more leaks. Might have more leaks. I'm looking. But yeah, I'm I'm super butthurt about no sanguinary guard. I mean, I kind of get the reasoning, but like, give me my fucking models, man. <laughs> I'm tired of this shit. I'm okay with I it. I work hard to make money to piss away on resin. <laughs> That's true. Let me spend my money. Khan is weapon skill seven. Oh, you found him? Uh, no, that's all I found was somebody. This is my dude that got all the space wolf stuff for you. Mm-hmm. That's who he's in Finland right now. But um, yeah, what Khan weapon skill seven? That's kind of disappointing. He should be weapon skill eight at least. Uh, yeah, maybe his thing is he's better. Yeah, in fact, everyone was like, yeah, it's a little low, but um. Oh, but he's got jet bike mobility and all his attack first. That's kind of a balancing okay, factor. That's, that's, that's fair. fair. That's fair and enough. And keep in mind, with weapon skill seven, I mean, he's still hitting on like fours I mean, and stuff. So Korax is seven, Alpharius is seven, Fulgrim is eight, Vulcan is seven, Lorgar is six, bitch. Horus is eight, Magnus is seven, Ortarian is seven, Robute is seven. So Weapons, not bad. Uh, Russ is nine, uh, Dorn is eight, uh, Angron is nine, Pterobo's eight, Conrad is eight. So he's on the lower end of average, yeah. but he's fast as balls. Yeah, and but, on a jet bike, which means he is the most mobile. Primer. Oh, you know what? I didn't think about it. It's, it's not even a, it's not even a normal bike. It's a fucking jet bike. Mm-hmm. But still, no con rules at the moment. Maybe they'll drop here in real yeah, time. I'm to think. I found. He's got a mounted, not mounted option. Mounted options obviously tougher, so I'm gonna assume maybe toughness seven. Maybe. I, I can't imagine a con being tougher than the average six. Like, no. I, I, I just don't think that matters. Mounted's tougher. Not mounted is cheaper and has higher initiative, which I guess is probably to then balance out the fact that. Um, Did you find it? I'm still looking. Um, He's getting very quiet over there in the corner, staring at his phone. <laughs> I'm trying to find. I think that is where he gets the attack first, probably. From the bike? From the bike, I would think. Mounted is tougher and cheaper higher. Apparently, he's got a really good spear. No info on that. Thanks, guys, on the internet for, you know. Oh, it's good. I don't know what it does, though, but it's fucking good. Um, Isn't there... Did, I know that's the moon sword that won Khan in 40K. Oh, what? If he's not mounted? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, sorry, different character. Um, Rugged Spear can come in from outflank, pick the side in advance. He's got five up, plus plus to shooting, three plus plus. Oh, you're, you're real low. Yeah, there you go. Oops, I moved my microphone. That's all right. So he's got a five plus plus to shooting, three plus plus in combat. Um, so apparently that Quinn Ha guy. Oh, okay, and a new character who can be mounted or not. If he's not mounted, he gets to take a Sister of Silence, who boosts his attacks, gives Fearless, and has a Thunder Hammer that can do add initiative attacks, kind of like... Um, Th- uh, this is the first sergeant or whatever? We his don't fi- know who this is. It looks like... I think he was the guy that I showed you the picture with the burnt-off face. Okay. I think it's that guy. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's see. The White Scar's unique units. A three-man jet spikes jet bike squad 
with lances, they're strength seven, AP one on the charge at initiative ten. Mm-hmm. But they can only make one attack with that lance when they do that. I would assume maybe they get more not on the charge in exchange for it not being good. But that could be kind of useful. They great against vehicles potentially. All right, explain, explain that to me one one more time. All this says is they're strength seven, AP one on the charge at initiative ten. However, only one attack ever. Okay, I'm so it's, it's the initial. That that means. It's initial thrust in. Yeah, I'm gonna assume that what that and they have hit and run from somewhere else told me that. Um, so what I'm gonna assume that means if for whatever reason you don't do, you know, the hit and run thing that you're just an idiot and you're stuck in close combat with one attack and no bonuses. Okay, that makes sense. Terminators that don't ever count for victory points, which are probably the Eben Kashik or whatever. Um, because I think those are the ones that are supposed to be the guys that went traitor and now they're like in repentance or something on like suicide missions. Okay, that, that makes sense. That's from like the novel Scars, which I again have only read like half of. A recon squad with four up armor, lightning claws, and they can redeploy at the start of the game. Can take cyber hawks, which I remember being real bullshit in the rules. In, they can uh, reroll ones. Book six. Oh, is that it? Yeah. They did some other stuff. And they're extremely cheap. And then the speeder that we talked about. Um, there is a design for sisters on jet bikes. Huh. Which, oh, by the way, Custodian's got, you know, full army thing. I think we Yeah, already, we talked about yeah, that already. I can't remember. It's weird when we've talked about this stuff nonstop for several hours. But in the middle of that, we've also been doing a podcast on and off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, what did we talk about when? Um, the Lion was apparently mostly done, but then they stopped to do other stuff. He's got both the Lion's Blade and a Chainsword. Really? Pretty cool. cool. I hope he looks like a badass man. I'm not a big fan of him, but, like, I think he can be kind of cool. I'm not not the hugest fan of him either, but he deserves to be good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. I think we already read this, but, yeah, the Blood Angels 5-man Assault Squad, 2-up armor, power swords with either plus 1 initiative or sunder and rending. Well, that's yeah. I mean, do that that could be your that, that could be okay. No, that could be your fucking sanguinary guard. I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. True choice of sanguinius. Yeah, and we can we can also come up with house rules here. We do that. And there are troops choice. Yeah, def- with sanguinius. Yeah, that's definitely worth. I mean, okay. that that makes sense. So then, so that's your sanguinary guard right there. Okay, crimson. And they balance. look, and they never change their look. Right? They've always looked that. They've way. They've always looked that way. Yeah. So there so you I, go. And I've got a million sanguinary guard models. All right, Crimson Paladins, three men for 160. I'm seeing that multiple places, so maybe that's true. Maybe they bump up to a five-man squad, not a ten-man. I don't know. Yeah. 160 points for the three. Shields reduce incoming melee by one strength. That's actually pretty solid because what's that mean if you get hit by a power fist? Yeah, yeah, you're not doubled oh, out. you're not doubled out. Yep. Oh, which is real nice because what else? They have a five-up feel no pain, and if they're outnumbered, it goes up to a four-up. Oh, that's tight. That's Real tight. And if that's, those rules are correct, and and not for nothing, that's also a interesting sh- twist on existing rules. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I I actually like that. And that's cool. Presumably they get those same power sword variants, which could be I right. I could mess with that. Okay, I could fuck with that. Um, like I think I said earlier, the white scars, um, like color plates, look awesome. Um, a lot of color variants between, like, this one I'm staring at now, all white armor, almost kind of pearlescent, um, red knee pads, a bunch of red triangles all over the armor, red stripe down the middle of the chest, the faceplate has a big red, like, arrowhead drawn onto it, the backpack is solid crimson, um, looks really cool, they've got, like, brass studs all over them, and some Alpha Legion paint leaking underneath. No, is that what that is? Joke. Yeah, that's what that is. It's peeled back. Um, the other one we were talking about earlier, all red armor, um, red triangles kind of on the shins, all white jump pack. I just noticed that. No, excuse me. White vents on the jump pack, red center portion to the Mark IV jump pack, uh, white helmet with red mohawk and red, like, face, like, jaw plates. Mm-hmm. Um Red shoulder pads with white trim and really fancy, you know, obviously Mongolian-inspired designs all over them. Teeth Mongolian. hanging off my goddamn Mongolians. 
Um, the armor is like basically the same colors the Thousand Suns have been depicted. That really yeah. bright, and then it's got like a white stripe down the torso, white trim. Um, again, kind of Mongolian or Mongolian. Goddamn Mongolian. Um, inspired like writing. Like there's little. Um, oh God, what's that writing style called? I want to call it like hieroglyphics, but you know the, the same thing with like a Japanese. And oh, characters. The um. The square, ka- basically, kaji? where it's like a square. And you fill in the square like, with the it, actual letter, kind of. It's not Kaji or is it Kaji? Something, yeah, um, something like that. Joe's fucking screaming at me right now. Okay, don't play the race card now. <laughs> I get it. Um, the Terminators are all black, cataphractic Terminators, all black, white gorget, white knee pads, white top shoulder pads. Because you know how the cataphractic have doubled up ones. Yeah. Black head. Red face. So that's probably those are probably the the, the cursed guys. You know what I mean? The yeah, that re- would repenting. make sense. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that would make sense. In fact, there's art from the book, like showing a battle scene and a bunch of them, and they're all black with the red faces. God, that's really cool, actually. Um, looking around, they got jet bike pictures, but they're clearly not that. They got pictures of some Mark II. White scars running around with flame thro- uh, flamers. That's pretty tight. Burning the shit out of motherfuckers. Um, can can there... Jet bikes can all have heavy flamers, all right? I don't know. No, only salamanders ones. These guys are on foot. Gotcha. With jet bikes with meltos flying over their head and they're burning people. I love it. Um, what else do we have? This Man, I wish this stuff filtered out like in an even... Not even like at once where it was clean. I feel bad because I feel like I'm just kind of finding this stuff you're, out. You're um, butchering it. Yeah, butchering it. Like I, whatever. Props to everyone listening because I'm sure it's been a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, the demon on Sanguinius's scenic base, sold separately, um, is apparently a new kind of demon that's classified as something kind of more middle size. So presumably. Definitely smaller than the Bloodthirster looking at it, but it's shitload bigger than like a uh, Blood Letter. Um, humanoid, really probably about the size of a Blood Crusher. The Rhino guys, you know? Yeah. But like, more well, well, simian. There's, there's that, yeah, there's that one demon, that corn demon in the AOS box that looks very. The um, Korgath thing or whatever. Yeah, that, it looks like a, The it thing lo- that's a Hellbrute. It's yes, not, yes. With pooping out skulls. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And these have been described as a new kind of demon that are basically like line breakers. And looking at this, the flesh is kind of like purple fading to orange. So it's not potentially cornate or anything. It, it's probably an unmarked demon, which would be cool because we don't really have a lot of those. Limited info we've got is that all the Ruin Storm demons will have rules, have models. Um, They're supposed to play a little bit like uh, cults and militia, where you pick like overarching stuff and it modifies the whole list. Kind of how the cults and militia have provinces of war, so you give them like plus one toughness, plus one strength, um, increased leadership, feel no pain, shit like that. Demons will have something similar. Start strong, fade out. As the turns go on, they get weaker. Um, we got a new Titan, the Mechanicum Acastus Knight Asterius, which we've seen before. It's got Volkite Culverin, t- Volkite Culverin turrets, which we all know I love. And what are the, what's the profile for those? Uh, those are 45 inch range, strength six, four shots, AP five with the Volkite rule. Nice for the titty turrets, basically. Yeah, uh, this looks basically it's a uh, polyphoron or whatever that is, um, the big one that's got the giant. Um, God, they're not turbo lasers, are they? They're just some kind of goofy strength ten last cannon variant. But this one has double giant conversion beamers, which are pretty cool. Uh, we're seeing new weapons for the Warlord Titan. Um, new weapon in terms of models, not um, in terms of rules. The Macro Gatling Blaster and the Morai Quake Cannon. Still waiting for that Saturine Power Claw thing. Uh, White Scars Legion Contemptor Dreadnought. Just a generic, but it looks fucking cool. Again, we know my opinion on dreadnoughts with white scars, but fuck it if the model looks good. Yeah, also, that could be another another thing in the fluff, which is punishing the, the traders. True. You know what I mean? True, true. Um, I like it because it's got all the freaking top knots and shields and little banners and lightning and ropes. Red fist, which is really cool. Uh, 
one. Their Leviathan's okay. I mean, it's better than the better than the Night Lord's Leviathan. I don't mind that one, dude. The body on it is so out of place. I, I just think it's the way it's painted. It could be the. It, well, same thing with like the Rolderon model. It looks like shit, but it's because it's painted like cartoony. Like it's not at all realistic. It's very yeah. The same. Flat. So the same guy who painted the um, uh, red that the Space Wolf new the new Space Wolf character, he's very cartoony looking. Yeah, this is not the dude that painted the normal Blood Angel stuff. Because if you look, the color is not even. And I'm not saying he's the same guy that painted that one, but that one was very like that. It's not. It's not that. <sighs> there's a certain style that looks well for marketing purposes. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it's not too clean, it's not too stylized, but it, it just kinda it kinda I don't even know how to I don't even know how to classify it, but yeah, the Varl Red Blood or whatever and and this guy, it, it just looks too cartoony. I can't I can't express anything more than that, in I'll my opinion. Issues with like the he's so he's in a cool pose, he's got his sword like outstretched. Yeah. He's standing next to this giant severed demon arm with like bones poking out of the stump. And he's cleaning blood off the blade, and he's got an underslung um, combi flamer, which is pretty cool because it kind of harkens to the yep. uh, sanguinary guard, yep. except in being over the wrist, it's under like a dreadnought. Uh, yeah. And he's wiping the blood off. The only problem is the blood drops are like the size of his head, which is a problem that I ran into looking at like the new Night Lord's Praetor. specifically the one in the power armor, not term anything, thing, where like his helmet fins were like hugely yeah, thick yeah. and like there's just I don't know. there's there's some uh, fluff in regards to that that after after Conrad left everybody tried to look like Savator with the those modified him Django or whatever his name is Django Fett and like a lot of people thought it was trash yeah fair fair um, what else we got? Oh, um, really the only last thing that I've got for notes is that we're getting a new FAQ soon to buff some units that, uh, these are Legion specific units mainly, but also some generics that basically either got missed or have been pointed out to Forge World time and time again. Um, an example, Ash and Circle are supposed to get buffed. One of the things mentioned is their Axe Rakes, which are currently, I want to say AP4, AP5. And do that cool thing where your opponent gets minus one to get swept, which is real nice. Um, they're going to get boosted to AP3, which I think they really need. Yeah, I agree. Um, Sakarans, like we said earlier, can now squadron up and squadrons up to two, which is another thing, actually, I think you and I had talked about previously, Adam, yeah. about kind of home rule in it, where squadroning them in three was probably broken, but having it be one just kind of sucks. Yep. As we said earlier, destroyers down to 60 points base for a five man, plus five per uh, model for jump packs. I don't recall the price off the top of my head right now, but I can tell you 100% that's a shitload cheaper. Um, rumor has it they've got some new rules as well, but no word on them. Um, rumor has it the Iron Hands gun them down rule is going to be changed to actually be good. Because as we know right now, that is a, or as it exists right now, is a, you can't sweep, but you can snap fire at people with your bolters instead of running them down and wiping out their entire squad. You know, balanced. So it's good to know that. Angron apparently gets plus one to his feel no pain. I think as it is right now, it's a four? Was he a three at feel no pain? It's either a four or five that he's got, so it would bump him to a three or a four. No, which I don't is think cool. it's. I don't think it's a th- four. Okay, then it would bump it to a four. Yeah, which works because he's got freaking three up armor. You know, like he's he's pretty shitty. He was kind of scary in the beginning. Up, he's only got a five up invuln. Yeah, he's a five up invuln, three up armor. Like he needs he needs a boost, man. Like. <sighs> I hate he's to say weird it, they just need to do. They just need to do his demon model. They need to do his demon model and demon rules. I mean, they basically got one. You take uh, Scarbrand. No, not Scarbrand. Um, the shit, the old Forge World Bloodthirster, Angrath, the Unbound or whatever. Take that. Get one of those Green Stuff World Tube Makers, and just put the friggin' cords running out of the back of his head. Done. Yeah. He's already yeah. got an axe. 
I want the official shit, bro. No. Which is funny because I still have that fucking uh, Magnus, <laughs> which I refuse to paint. And it's not that I don't like Magnus. Well, I mean, like, our buddy Keith's Magnus is freaking sick. Yeah, yeah. I've I seen just, a bunch of it. It's a great model. It is great. I mean, I have it. It's halfway painted. I just yeah. don't care. you got to jump into those creature caster models, by the way. I got one. I got the one, the spider chick. Yeah. Spider yeah, chick. I'm kind of... Spider chick. I mean, listen, man. I wish the best for those guys, but that was, like, a ridiculous amount of time that took me to get that model. You're not the only one. Yeah. Yeah. But they have some cool sculpts. I've heard their business stuff gets better, but... Well, good for them. Um, what else? Palatine blades get a buff unnamed oh, really? right now. But Pal- I mean, Palatine they suck. Blades are- they suck. They- do they not even have two up armor? They no, they have two up five up. Oh no, Palatine do not have a two up armor. Yeah, they're garbage. Yeah, they need a two up armor. But the armor. the Phoenix suck as well because it's only two no up. No mention of them, but yeah, they're garbage. Yeah, they- I mean they're they're cool. They're cool against troop choices, but they're they're it's they're With fucking the fluff, trash. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm still a firm believer. That um, just Darren Terminator should be like some of the best. I've heard Death Shroud are supposed to be super good too, but I don't know. But Palatine Blades are also supposed to be up. There. They're supposed to be fucking badass. Yeah, and they're not. I mean, I've I have played you where you're using them and laughed them off, and I have played myself using them and been like, dude, why why did I take these? Why did I spend the points? These are fucking dog shit. Yeah, I mean the only the only thing that I use them for is to put them with. Fulgrim in a, in a Spartan, you know? And even then, like, it just feels like a waste. Like, put Fulgrim in a friggin' Land Raider with a Command Squad. I mean, this, it just feels to me like a fluffy choice, because that's how it is in the book. He's always it, got his agreed, Phoenix Guard with him. Agreed, and we do, despite all our, you know, posturing, tend to play fluffy over anything else. Um, but yeah, they, ugh, they're just disappointing. Yeah. Um, the Moritat is supposed to get a buff after his massive nerf once they figure out how to do it. Because prior to it, they were too good because you take two plasma pistols and you kill off like a thousand points of stuff. Yeah. But now you pay 100, 150 ish points to get a guy that hits like a wet noodle. Yeah, because now he. It gets uh, hot on twos. Yeah, it's dumb. If it gets hot, chain fire ends. So, and they're limited to 12 hits. So, like, if you try to be cheeky and fire your, you know, like, let's say, Volkite Serpenta first, and let's say you rack up, like, 10 hits with that, and then you fire your plasma pistol, even if you don't get hot. Oh, you can split them? You can, yeah, you can split them. I didn't know that. But the thing is, 12 total, plasma gets hot on twos. And so, like, if you shoot plasma first, there's no way you're getting 12. No way in hell. Because a third of the shots end it by default. You know? But if you fire something else first that doesn't get hot, you might end up with a whole bunch of basically worthless hits. Let's say it's a bolt pistol. Ooh, scary. Ten bolt pistol hits. That gets yeah. one guy. And then you crack off your plasma pistol. And if you don't get hot, you know, on the second one, well, well you're maxed out. You've got two. They're just, they're not worth the points. And it's a fucking HQ slot. I would like to see it where a Moritat is like an elite or a zero to one slotless choice. I think it makes sense that you can add a Moritat to a, um, yeah, a, a destroyer squad. Yeah. But, but he, does, he doesn't count as an HQ choice. Yeah. And, it doesn't, and he like doesn't take a spot. The anymore. Yeah. Yeah, like, what's, almost so what, like a reverse command squad. What's the story with them? They're the basically cats? like, I don't know if they're condemned or it's voluntary, but like they're um, they're almost like lone wolves or whatever. We're like they're just on a mission to die, basically. I guess almost kind of like Death Company, where it's like yeah. they're, they're not nuts, but like their whole thing is like I just I'm trying to end it, like suicide pact. Because they're all ratted out and dying, right? Uh, not necessarily. I don't think they're even necessarily straight out destroyer squads. Um, I know they were initially a product of the Raven Guard Legion, and they've got a unique one. But basically, their thing is they sneak in there and they just blam, 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 try to get something of value and expect to die. Hmm. Um, I, I'd like to see them. I, I don't know how to balance them out, to be honest, because. Conceptually, there's such a risk, you know? It's a single guy. 
if you give him a shitload of damage output, then if you go first and, you know, he hits, you get your points back and then some, and then he dies. But if you don't, then it's a huge waste of points. Like, it's just, it's too much of a gamble conceptually. Well, that's why they work with a Devastator, no, I mean, a Destroyer, Destroyer Squad, squad as, a, yeah. as a HQ yeah. attached to him. Yeah. You know? It just feels like a way to, I mean, I, that was like one of my first models I ever built. I converted the uh, Chaplain from uh, Betrayal at Kalth, and yep. I gave him a jump pack and two Inferno pistols, and I was like, woo, Blood Angel Mori Tat. Never even bothered to paint him or do anything else. I don't think I even finished gluing him together. Never used him. Yeah. Now, the idea, though, of infiltrating him and blowing up like a Titan with 12 Melta shots does give me a little, a little bit of a chub. Now, why, could, never gonna why could you have Melta with uh, the Blood Angels? Because Blood Angels, anytime you can take a plasma pistol, can instead take an Inferno pistol. Oh, nice. But they're a six inch range pistol with the Melta rule, so you only get Melta at three. Oh, yeah, so you really got to get close in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it ain't happening. Still, it's cool. Um, I think that's about all we got. The giant drill dough uh, thingy that we saw before. We saw one painted up now. Um, we do know now that Blood Angels all have red helmets from the looks of it. Um, it does not look like they get blue or yellow helmets for Assault and De or Devastator and Assault Squads, respectively. I'm okay with that because, honestly, I think I've never liked that look. Yeah, neither have I. I like the yellow a little bit. But then like then you have the gold. Like the blue. Yeah, the gold. Actually the, the blue is the one I don't mind. Really? I don't I don't like the shiny gold. I don't like the metallic Yeah, the metallic gold and like you have the painted yellow. I just See, think it's stupid. I don't like the blue conceptually because they have yellowish gold on them, so you get this primary color red, blue, yellow gold, and I'm kinda like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like it reminds me of as a little kid when you'd like put the ketchup and mustard on your plate. Like you know, it just gets all fucking cartoony looking. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know what you mean there. Yeah. Uh, you don't like don't your food know. touches touching? Uh, no, God, no. I'm not one of those at all. I get man. One of my cousins is like that. It's mad weird. I'm one of those like I literally just take it and mix it all together, and I'm like, all right, good. Eat that shit out of a bucket. You're a mad man. I am a mad man. I'm also a fat man. It is. You have gained a little bit of weight, but you know what? You've lost a little bit of weight too. So you're starting, you're starting a little, little sexy again. A little sexy again. Yeah. Word. That's what happens when you get old. Hit yeah. thirty. Yeah. So you, what happened? You, you hit thirty and you gain a bunch of weight and you're like, fuck. I haven't even hit thirty yet, dude. I know that's what's it's coming. And then you're Sorry, like, fuck. Man. So then you get you know back into the gym and everything. That's the way to go. I need to. It's gonna happen. I think that's all we got in terms yeah. of stuff. Uh, there's some more. So that's it for news, folks. Hobby updates. Just kidding. Yeah. I think we're gonna cut it there. Yeah. Well, we already well, have <laughs> hobby updates. Except no, I don't just fuck with you. So hey guys, we're gonna change the format of this. This was a big news dump because of the book. But we're going to change the format a little bit. We're still going to talk a little hobby updates. We're still going to, we're going to take some time and talk about some painting techniques and everything. It's, it's a visual medium, of course, so we can't get into it on the podcast as much. But just talking about different tips and tricks and stuff to experiment and try yeah. to increase your painting volume or completeness or whatever else you want to do. But we're also going to start to dive into some of these books. I think what we'll try to do is when we sit down and do the podcast, we'll uh, jump on a book um, each or the same book and talk about it. Because the, the fun part about the heresy is the lore and everything. And then hopefully one other segment of the podcast can be our campaign. We're going to do a campaign starting with book two with the uh, the massacre. So we're doing Istvan 5. We're doing all Istvan armies. And we're really excited about the format. We're going to kind of D&D &D format it. And what I mean by that, there's going to be six people. We're going to have um, play doubles each game. But what will end up happening is we will have a kind of a game master who will be responsible for setting that game up, you know, how to set up the table and some other tips and tricks they want to do with the picks the scenarios. We'll have kind of a master disaster that will that will be in charge of randomizing any NPC type things that happen or, you know, some other fun stuff. Um Oh but, shit, a nuclear missile just landed in the middle of your troops. There you go. And but the the coolest thing though is that we're all kind of getting together helping each other with their, our armies, how to make that list and and trying to make a fluffy story. And then whenever we play these games, I mean the goal of these games is to have a narrative play to go in there and, and retell the story of Istvan 5. Cuz so, we don't know how it turns out. Yeah, so it's how it got that. We way. might play a game where it's Chris's Sons of Horus. 
that I'm playing as loyalist and he's playing my emperor's children, you know? So, uh, you know, we might randomize some of like who plays what, which kind of sounds taboo, but if I think once we get it squared away, it's going to be pretty cool. But with that said, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Appreciate the, oh, you got something? Well, just real quick before we sign oh, alibi. off. alibi. Got to do a shout out to. Yes, the, we have shout outs to do. Our, our pals, um, pals of our pal, um, the Varangian Heresy podcast out of Sweden. They uh, hosted up our, our buddy Alex a while ago and have been providing us with some info. And given that they also have a podcast, we feel like we should definitely give them a shout out since we basically just took a bunch of their info for our own. There you go. And uh, another shout out, if I can, to my uh, my homies, the Handsome Boys, B O I Z, off of uh, the Something Awful forums, both for providing me, uh, us, I should say, with some of this info live from the Weekender event. And also for flying my ass out to Vegas in four or five days, because they paid for that out of the kindness of their own heart. So and plus, you know where all the, and plus you know where all the bodies are buried. I do know where all the bodies are buried because I buried them. <laughs> Always keep a shovel in your trunk, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. <laughs> and of course, uh, the cool table network out there—a group of like-minded nerds who get together and you know share the stuff. Uh, of course, you're listening to this, this on Nerd Rage Radio. There's also Shattercast Uncut, where beer, there was Beer and Boulders 40K, now Beer and Boulders 30K. We'll get um, back in ninth edition. Stasis Lock, uh, Eight Weeks, Toy Detox, uh, Breaking the Mold, Building Up to It, and I'm missing I'm missing someone. Fuck, I should write this shit down. And I have a bunch of cups and, or tiles in front of me to remember to read it yeah. every time. I mean, we didn't really take notes <laughs> this time. This literally came oh, about. Oh, in, uh, Enter the Realm. Hmm. Enter the Realm. That's the one I feel like I'm missing. And we need, man, we need to get like a Star Wars Legends podcast together because you know, dude, me and Bobby just bleed that shit. Uh, you know what? You should talk to Bobby about that. I he, he'd probably do it. Yeah, I'm and, all about uh, it, man. I got a whole bookshelf to it. Star Wars was my first fandom, dude. Oh yeah, I'm all I hear about you, man. that stuff, man. I, I used to win money. The on reason in college on that shit. Hey, the reason that I do 40 k is I thought they were Star Wars miniatures at first. So oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, guys, uh, that's about it, and hopefully we'll be back next week with some more stuff. You guys... Uh, a little more organized, too. Yeah. This hopefully. literally came about. We were driving yeah. around, and we're like, No, hey, this literally came by. My wife and I went to a hockey game. Chris stayed to watch the dog because my kids were at my parents' house. And um, we came by. We came back home like, hey, man, you want this new stuff's out. We should do a podcast. And we've been talking about it for a while, so it happened. All right, guys, remember, paint your models, play fluffy games, don't be a douchebag, neckbeard, uh, and have fun with it. It's just a game. And remember, yeah. blood for the wolf god? What? No. What? what? Fur for the fur god. That, fur for that, the that's fur just, god. That's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> yif, 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 yif. <laughs> oh, God, is that going to be our new outro? <laughs> no, I don't I don't have one. I'm just <laughs> No, I'm not doing that either. It's goofy. Later. <laughs>